So it's um, 6 o'clock, uh, the town office clock, so I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? None for me. I just have a small one. Um, I forgot to mention anything about the capital fund for the town highway equipment. Um, it could either be an update or maybe when we're doing the town treasurer's report just to see if anything's happening with that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so, any public comment? I guess in, in one of the other agenda, uh, agenda items, items might be the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right. Um, then I would make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then I would make a motion that we approve the uh, select board meeting minutes for the November 11th, uh, 2019 meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'm sign on the dotted line here. Let's Take it off, it works better, but uh, I'm in a lot of pain, so for the first, yeah. catch 22. And I'm on week three waiting for the MRI people to call me to uh -huh. make an appointment. So it sounds like it'll be a problem. Did you get my Irish? You lose it. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda is, uh, actually we aren't at 6.05 yet, so um, technically we should probably wait. I'm not sure if Chuck Batchelder is going to be here to talk about the Woodbury Village or not. Somebody else just came in. No, he's not here. So I guess um, technically maybe we'll just go on to something else here. Um, let's see. I don't know if Brandy is ready for us. Top here? Yeah, we could. So. If either Diana or Brandy are ready. Brandy, are you ready to? Chuck isn't here yet. It's not quite like six or five. Hi, buddy. Hello. 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 If you aren't, that's fine. We could um, we could do the zoning. I would love that because we have a sure. grandson. Yeah. Not oh, really why don't we do that back at the house. Do, okay. Um, so the zoning ordinance amendment. I have copies for everybody. Oh, cool. Yeah, I read through that one. I have. Here it is. Oh, you are good. You're a fast reader. Yeah. You try it? <laughs> yes, thank you. Anybody else like a copy? I would, please. Here you go. Thank you. Very okay. good, Susan. I have this one. There we go. I, I have to admit one thing. I did not have time enough to look at fully the statues because there's so uh, many statues. I looked online at statutes. I also looked through the League of Cities and Towns and what they had to say about zoning, which was very little, really. Uh, so I, the, I think what you see here, the zoning, uh, not the zoning, but the um, statutes that's quoted, mm -hmm. I cannot confirm that at this point. Okay. Well, okay. this is because just it's a draft. It's the old then. one. It's the old. No. It's the old. It's taken from the old zoning ones. The, the if you see the yellow highlighted items, that means that's Plus what really changed. Change. Yep. That's what. That's what I've changed. Okay. So. Well, it can still be considered a draft, and absolutely, you, look, you might be able to. Um, the VLCT might review this for you. I would love that. Yeah. Um, okay. And usually. Yeah, they usually will for yeah. town. Yep. Yep. Okay, so maybe what I should do, if you want me to go forward with this, is to contact the Vermont League of Cities and Towns mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to see if they I appoint somebody to me that I can go in town and meet Just with. Just to review it. Right. Yeah. I you, can, you can either um, go in and meet someone or you could, right. if you have this digitally, you could send right. it to them and they would review it and then right. they send you an email or, or okay. then you could have a conversation. Right. I'm, I'm having problems emailing from here to my home. Uh, uh -huh. I, I had to come here and do all this and I had to go to Staples and get it 
copied with the color and they had to go through through the computer in order to do this and uh -huh. I, I've used I used my auditor's computer mm -hmm. to, to do all that. Well I mean what you've done looks good to my non-knowledge. Mm -hmm. It does, it really looks, you've know, covered our problem we had with the utilities. Yeah, that's, that's what started there. everything. Yeah, yeah, started right. all, yeah. yeah I, I ordered the fire, I added the fire hydrants for you. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. why, why not? It's always good to know if you have a fire hydrant. Yeah. That's dry hydrants. Yeah, right. and, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, could be. Yeah, no, what you've done so far looks, looks good to, to yeah. my uneducated okay. eyes. I think the 10 cents a foot was my idea. Yes, okay. I wonder how that works out. Is that? Yeah, I was going to say, so looking at this, was there a basis you had a, where this came from? Hardwick schedule. Okay. From Mostly Hardwick. Hardwick. Mostly Hardwick, yeah. 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 I think they had a $100 uh, fee for mm -hmm. a residence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, there's big residences and there's medium residences and there's smaller right. ones. And right. The uh, 10 cents a foot seems to kind of reflect what you're building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not too yeah. high and it's not too right. low. Mm -hmm. we, as a select board, you can yeah. always change them. You don't need mm -hmm. have any any votes or anything. Right. You can just change your fees at any time. Yeah. That okay. I did learn from the three yeah. of the statutes. Okay. And a permit will have the square footage on it. Sure. Or if it doesn't, it will be figured pretty quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the average house on did what? Short term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This, Airbnb. This Probably, is the B and B. When I calculate this for fire water flow, I usually calculate like a fifteen um, square foot. They Less have to register uh, with either Airbnb yeah. or with um, um, HomeAway or one of those entities on about a that people square foot house. look yeah. into to, in order mm -hmm. to have a a long term or a short term. Rental in an area. Short term and is under thirty days. Yeah, and these are those air right. bed and breakfasts. Yeah. So what from yes. our office regulates those, and we don't generally inspect oh, them, but they have a certificate that they you. have to <laughs> fill out a self uh, self certification that they keep on the property, and it looks like you're just asking for a copy of that. That's so. a new state law. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. And, and the Airbnb and uh, home away, they collect the tax and they send that tax money to the state. So we don't have to depend it's on nothing with us, but we would know it's there. Do they have to notify the towns that they're using the I don't think so. No. no. Not yet. Under our yeah, zoning, no. they do. No, they don't. Oh, do they in our zoning? zoning? Okay, okay, yeah, I didn't know the answer to that. Okay, and, unless, unless Vermont League of Cities and Towns says you can't do that. Because they don't notify the state. They just, uh, for us, right. they just, I, I get a call and I give them the self-certification form. They're required to post it on the property. A number of towns okay. are looking at yeah, it. We follow up on complaints. Their new zoning having something to do to address Airbnb, short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. So that's a one-time application. Yeah, it's not even a, yeah. a year or the, the short certificate. Term. The certificate we have is just a piece of paper you print offline and fill it out. Mm -hmm. There's not even a fee associated with it. Yeah. Just so that you know what's Yeah, happening. just jump on our website, Mike, and you can fill it right out. I, mean, I don't do the computer. Okay. <laughs> but they don't have to fill out that every time they have different renters come in. No. 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 Okay. So well, once no. a year? Or you, you have a dwelling on your property, or you're an investor, and you just bought a dwelling, okay, in a house, and you say, I want to do an Airbnb here. So... You need to advertise that, right? You're not going to do it by yourself. So you put it on Airbnb or Home Away. And what they do is they say, okay, but you need to work with the state. You need to set a certificate. Our zoning rules here, proposed, says you need to come in for a permit, one-time permit for that particular dwelling okay. that you want as an Airbnb. Okay. And then the and then what the Airbnb or the home away does is they collect the taxes from you, the nine percent tax from you and or from not in particular you, but from the right the customer, yeah. Yeah, Is your from property the tax at a different rate if it's Airbnb or does it stay the same? No. no, it's, no. Just a, it's just a form. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. it's a state okay. Stuff. Yeah. Now this so does then this change of use, does that come into play too? It does. From being a residence to an Airbnb? Yes it does. Yes yeah. it does. So it'll be seventy five dollars if they'll have to pay. Um, mm, might, to right? ha that might happen, yeah. yeah. It, it hasn't been done yet. Here. Yeah, it's still proposed. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. But looking at this, that's... Yeah. That's yeah. assuming that the owner doesn't use it, right? That's... Exactly. And that's what the state wants to capture. The investors coming to the state right. and saying, I want to buy this house. It's beautiful. I don't want to live there. 
I'm going to Airbnb it. So I, I okay. obviously don't know the answer. So in, in my situation where I use it a lot, or my family uses it a right. lot, and yeah. occasionally an Airbnb person right. goes in, Right. What do I, what do I have to Well, that, you know, that's like our yes. neighbors, the Coyotes. Yes, they always of, rent their apartment, their, their houses, five, little so camps kind of down there for like a week at a time and stuff like that. I don't think, I do not think You're talking this, about me. Don't worry about me. <laughs> this requires you to come in for a permit. It does or doesn't? This, no. No. Oh, okay. No, it because doesn't. Because it's an occasional thing for me. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> this, no, this is registered uh, Airbnbs. Oh, okay. And that's okay. what the state's after, too. From our perspective, we're not after okay. occasional renter. The one no. that we have, a, that if you go to Stowe, there's hundreds of these properties. They're just all yes. investment properties. Yeah. And we aren't inspecting them except for complaints, but they're required to fill the. Right. Fill so the this floor. is more of a business thing. Correct. Yeah. There's companies, companies have 400 oh. units, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of and, and the state's new law, they, wow. they, they, they check into septic, they check yep. into fire, they check mm -hmm. into health, and they mm -hmm. on, on the facility. There's a current yeah. sticky wicket at the state level, too, because there's yeah. a lot of... Okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, so this must make you We should probably try to move on and yeah. go to the discussion. Okay. <laughs> so I, I think this looks good. We'll take it under advisement. And it doesn't take yeah. too long. Yeah. The only yeah. comment well, I would it make... It looks good? You're saying it looks good? Well, my only... figured out what, what that... Price change would right. mean? Well, this is what I'm trying to get at. I think the I think if we're going to look at raising fees, that we'll, that proposal should go out to the public in some form mm -hmm. um, before we do that. Well, it needs yeah. It needs to that was the only comment I was going to make. If that's what we're going to do, think we should just, just a copy of what Hardwick does. And Hardwick yeah. Is yeah. Like what I mean by the main, the other than that, the only comment I was going to make was uh, before we actually made the change, my opinion, send it out and get some eyes on it. Just so people can have some money. But keep, keep in mind when you do that, the, the, a lot of these properties don't have the right to vote because correct. That's, yeah. That's I'm true. just interested in what people say. That's all. Because right. when we talked about that fee, just for everyone, we were talking about trying to have the fee cover the cost of the zoning officer. Right. I, I felt the twenty-five dollars flat fee for everything was very antiquated, and it, it wasn't. It really wasn't doing our town any justice. So well, we were making money off it, but it's not well, a profit. We don't want to make any money off of it, but we we certainly want to be able to uh, pay the zoning administrator and any any t uh, the clerk's work, anybody that had something to do with it. You know, there's a two schools of thought there that the person getting the permit should bear all the cost, and there's right. another school of thought that says that everybody in the community benefits from having Certainly, zoning, yep. and they will. So to have some of the costs come out of the general fund is mm -hmm. it's just so we'll look probably out of place, so. but it, there's also to go along with that the town is benefiting from having zoning and everything else. They're also benefiting from the tax base that's coming sure. in. Sure. Yep. Right. Yeah. So you know, yeah. somewhere you got to cut them a little slack. Right. That's why I said we got to look at that and see. <clears throat> and how this whole flies. idea. Yep. Well, I, 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 I think maybe. If, if you want me to, or you guys want to do this, is look at the past zoning permits and figure out, okay, the last one had a uh, 800 square foot. What is that to the $25 flat fee? $80. Is it more? Is it less? Mm -hmm. How much more? And how about if they repaired something, removed something, or had a change of use? A change of use would cap to $25. And would your... Uh, fee be based on the square footage on the ground or on the multiple floors? What? The square footage that they report on their permits. Do you want to look at this, Dan? No, she, she's already so. seen it. Yeah. So I said, we got a question. We'll look at it. I mean, it's quite a bit. Oh, yeah. The only place I could see is sticking is just look, figure the fee out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so if just it's, so everybody knows the change is, I just came into this late. I do have some information on the. Mm -hmm. number of permits that you asked for last time but mm -hmm. it's later on the agenda mm -hmm. but you can't just change zoning mm -hmm. until the plan is written right. and approved right so. but but what i but was we can't asked... change the permit i mean you, you told us oh yeah but you, i mean talk, talking about making a regulation regarding uh airbnb right. you just can't change that until you right. go through right. the whole planning right. process right. And, and, but what i was tasked tax tasked with was to um come up with uh, primarily the the fees, and that's what I focused and updating on. The application and I wanted to, to update the applications 
Uh, and I got a little carried away with myself. I added email addresses. <laughs> that would be updated. <laughs> and a difference to utility right away. Uh, and I, I mentioned fire hydrants and uh, poles and lines. And, um, mm -hmm. Basically what our had. Right, the issues yeah. we had yeah. with the utility easements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. has someone responded to Hardwick? They did request a response in writing. I have responded to them. In writing? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, and so and our zoning administrator yeah, our zoning administrator knows that he needs copies of that letter because Hardwick Electric has asked, asked him to hand out a copy of that letter to every zoning applicant. Okay. So he's going to need copies of that attached to the zoning application. See, what Hardwick Electric has run into just in the past, I'm going to say, two years, there have been three instances that cost over $10,000 each. Right. Cost the property to move in Woodbury. Yes. 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 Yeah, because it, but it's at the owner's expense. If they build any yep. easement right. right away, they have to move yeah. the poles and you've got to pay for it. Right. Well, that's true. And in most of those it's cases, they really said that that was going to happen. Your zoning administrator gives them right away to, to well, that's go what ahead we're, and build right, that. And that's what and we're trying to all fix. All of a sudden, yep. they've got a ten thousand dollar bill coming up. Yep. Well, in my defense, what they write down and put down and send in, if they omit something, that uh, I can't know about it. Well, th this has mm. happened. But don't you go check the site? No. Not always. No. Nope. I do now, but I <laughs> no. I can't imagine why you're being a zone administrator if you're not going out checking each site. That's the way it's been done. That's not true. No. Well, at I least during the 17 years I was yeah. zoning. Well, I this am. Come up and check my place well, out. This is the attempt to way. fix the problem. So. <laughs> and this has happened over the last uh, eight, ten years, so it's not just it's you know, our present zoning administrator. I'm not blaming no. anybody. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a problem that we were trying to fix. This is what we're fixing. Right. It won't happen again. Actually, one of them, one of those $10,000 ones that's happening right now, I did visit the site because around the, the shoreline, it's so congested. There's two hubby roads. Mm -hmm. I went to the wrong house. Uh -huh. I left the permit. I looked. And I said, gee, there's no problems with power lines here. It's probably here. South of <laughs> It was. <laughs> The original was on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, yep. Road. <laughs> there is. Yep. Okay. So, good. thank you for now. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, I would, I would send this into the LCT and, okay. say, and then we'll figure out a process for vetting this thing. Okay. Okay. Good job, Susan. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's something you can throw darts at, that's for sure. You got one. There you go. So, Chuck, just roll set. You're, you're out of chair in the middle if you want to come in and sit oh, down. Or. You may have my chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want me to be center of attention? <laughs> sure, come on in. <laughs> you could take the, what we call the hot seat. The right hot there, seats right there, or you can. Hot seat as well as a half hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got, they're gonna hit you. That's okay. I already got an injured wing, so I got. <laughs> well, I was here to begin with, with Woodbury Country Store and Mine, mm -hmm. and since I started petition and everything, it's been signed up. So I guess I don't have a leg stand anymore. <laughs> well. Well, the wait is pretty much over. Yeah. Pretty, right. That's what the yeah. petition was about. That's what the petition was about. Mm -hmm. But I have some other thoughts too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was a pretty bad weekend for the roads in the town of Woodbury. Mm -hmm. I would run the back road all the time, mm -hmm. and they were very slippery. And I. So have we moved on to the town highway issues with Lynn Gallison now? I don't believe it. Okay. All right. This is my issue. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can't, I think that you've got four people that work for the town now, right? Mm -hmm. How come two of them are not working on, are not taking Monday off and working Tuesday through Saturday morning? And the other two are working from Monday through Friday morning. 
Well, when, when, when it's a road, you know, snow plowing issue, there are three people that are needed to do that. Come on. Really? Mm -hmm. There was a 78-year-old man and another man my age that used to take care of all the roads, including West Woodbury. Well, this is, this is now, you know, that's the way it is now. Well, I'm probably going to have to get another petition going because mm -hmm. this is not right. Mm -hmm. Them roads should not go from Friday morning at 10 o'clock until Monday morning at whatever time they start. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. This well, was last weekend? Right. This I don't past think weekend. We had right it's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday is what you're saying, right? None. So lack None. of sand. Lack of sand. A lot of lack of sand. Mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon, it rained. Them roads are slippery. Yeah, they were. Sunday morning, they were bad. Sunday morning, they were bad. Sunday afternoon, they were bad. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't tell me that there's not some way. And Mr. Daly, I know for a fact that he's worked seven days a year, seven days a week all his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He grew up on a farm. He's always worked. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you asked him, he would be more than glad to work Friday. But wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. And Greg, the one they call Grizzly, mm -hmm. he worked at Napa Auto Parts. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him in the store on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. So you can't even begin to make me believe that this couldn't happen. Well, usually, you know, like on the weekend, if there's if people call and have an issue, then we call in the road crew. But you know what? The people in town would be a lot happier if the road crew was right there. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get none until 10.30 Saturday morning. Somebody was out there Saturday morning saying, oh yeah, these roads need to be sanded. Mm -hmm. You know? Buzz around, sand the roads up, they're good all day Saturday. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. If something happens, you get a rainstorm or something, we're trying to cut down on overtime and everything else. You've got to give those two guys, I believe it's 20 hours a week. So, spread it out. Good thought. Suggestions, bringing those, having them on the weekends when there's no, just well, to make no, sure we got sand. And Greg and Greg, one of them should work yeah. Friday and one should work Monday mm -hmm. and have one of the other guys with us. Mm -hmm. Or both of the other guys and then those two guys can take care of it at the end of the week. Whatever. Okay. But this stuff of them guys leaving at 10.30 in the morning <clears throat> and not touching the roads again until just before the school bus goes out. Mm -hmm. Friday afternoon the roads are slippery when the school bus was out. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to take my excavator off in the hill up to his house now for a week, and I ain't dared to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Peter stopped at my place Sunday. I was at the garage. Well, I was I'm sorry. He stopped at my house. Mr. Daly? Yeah, Peter okay. Daly, yeah. I, I can't, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Peter, and he got Tim's the other part time. Yeah. Yeah. And he wanted Greg's. Grizz's number, so I had to go up to the garage with him, and I mm -hmm. got it for him up there, and he called oh. Grizz mm -hmm. to see if, because he kind of felt like I should go out, but wanted to check with Grizz and, mm -hmm. and see if he wanted to go out, and they, they apparently didn't. So. Nobody came near? Yeah. No, nobody came no I noticed. But my point is, yeah. there is you could cut down a lot less on people having to call in, no, because, you know, when, when, if I have to call in because the road's so slippery, I can't go with my four-wheel drive truck. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I'm pissed off why I dialed a number. <laughs> really? And if you had, it looks to me like there's a potential where you could overlap this into Saturday, and a lot of times you'd get away without paying any overtime. Mm -hmm. And one other thing you have to think about is that your two top guys, Greg and Greg, mm -hmm. they both live in Hardwood. Right. I mean, it's not a big distance between Woodbury and Hardwood, but there is that imaginary line where Woodbury right. gets Woodbury worse. Woodbury is a lot worse. We've run into this where yeah. I've had to drive to North Montpelier and yeah. tell them down there that the road needs plowing up yeah. here, and they're down there like, what are you talking about? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I had that same issue when I had the store. They, they asked me they to call that. They know that. But my they thing know is, that yeah, but my thing is, if you get the boys in there, whatever time they start, on a regular basis, on Saturday morning, and they're there until 10, 10.30, mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, whatever they get done. Mm -hmm. They got a chance to go out and sand everything. Mm -hmm. When they leave at 10 o'clock Friday morning, mm -hmm. if it rains in Woodbury, they don't rain in Hydra. Mm -hmm. no, really? 
So then that dozen people call you and you've got to get somebody out. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I'm not going to sit beside the telephone and wait for you to call me. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense to let this overlap and have coverage. Mm -hmm. How do you work in a fire department? We go whenever we're called. Yeah, but you try to have all the coverage you can have. Oh, yeah, yeah, as much as we can, of course, yeah. Well, yep. it seems to me like the road crew should do the same thing. You won't get an argument from me. Okay. I guess I'm done. You rest your case. <laughs> I know. I didn't realize the phone call was because I was going to call, but then it started to snow and I thought they'd be out. Greenwood Lake Road was treacherous. I mean, I went right sideways in my pickup because of the bumps and then it just and spun right you out. Know, I, I do understand. I said I was done, but I guess I'm not quite. <laughs> <laughs> I understand nobody really wants to work weekends. No, nope. but hey, as Peter, as <laughs> Peter's wife, right here, does Peter, when he was doing carpenter work, did he work Saturday morning? Sure. And if he weren't working at his job, he was doing something else. I work every fifth weekend so, now. <laughs> So it's, I, I can't, anybody that's ever drove truck and really wants to drive truck has worked Saturdays, Sundays, all night, whatever. And it just seems to me that we're missing the ball here completely. We work those guys from Monday morning until Friday morning. And if they're going to come in on Saturday, it's overtime. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Last, last week they were all gone at 9 o'clock. The week before they were all gone. Greg was gone to me and Bird don't know what the hell he does up there. Nobody so Greg was gone. It don't matter what he does. Matter, but yeah, yeah, Greg, Greg, Greg has had um, you know a couple weeks vacation. Couple weeks yeah. vacation. Okay, that's, that's, not, that's not my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. mine either. You know what? Here. So yeah, Grizz is Grizz. So we still got three men. Yeah. Yeah. There's three people available to work. Yep. Yeah. And they weren't there. But my nope. my point is that the last two weekends, the roads in town of Woodbury haven't been. As good as they ought to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do you get for a comparison when you? I think a good comparison here would be: Has anybody received any complaints from the residents of West Woodbury, their roads, because the crew is not doing it, opposed to? You know, I haven't gotten any complaints from people in Woodbury yeah. or West Woodbury. Um, you know, you want to know why? You want to know why? Yes. Everybody, I, they call me. You know what I tell them? To call you guys. And they say, well, I've tried that and it didn't amount to dog noodle. Well, and you know, so the, the they have quit calling. The phone message at the town garage, if, you know, obviously if it's on a weekend, nobody's there to pick up the phone or if they're out on the roads, it asks them to call me. And no one has called me. I well, expect you. What? Are you going to call? But, the thing about it, the thing about And if I do get calls, you know, if I get calls. You don't know what the road conditions are. See, they shouldn't well, have to wait for a I know, I mean, I live up at the top of the hill here. If people call me, I, I figure they're calling for a reason, especially if they're people that don't usually call all the time for any little flake of snow. If I get a couple calls, then I call whoever, like, the Greg, either Greg, I call him and say, you know, we're getting some calls. We, you know, I basically call them in to come in and work on the roads. But people have to call. But doesn't it seem like it would be better to have the coverage? It's always been that the road commission. What do you mean you, you don't, don't know? Call the help. Out. How can you say you don't know? Well, that it wouldn't be better to have if, the coverage. If the, roads, on if the roads need to be worked on, yes, it would be better. But once you get it, there, I can. Give you a list of a hundred things that need to be done around this town. If they ain't doing road work on Saturday morning, they can be doing something else. In the winter time, so in the winter time, <laughs> chainsaw. Throw them electric chainsaws out and mm -hmm. give them a real chainsaw and send them out and cut some brush. Mm -hmm. this, this town needs that bad, bad, bad. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife I wouldn't lose my temper, so I guess I better <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> but. Just don't squeeze my hand. <laughs> <laughs> over on the county road, uh, over on the Cranberry Meadow Road right now, just above the Cranberry Meadow Road, the turn it goes to Logtown. Mm -hmm. You walk around that next little pond, you go right around that first corner, mm -hmm. there's a balsam tree right. that big around sticking right out in the road. Mm -hmm. And if a town truck or anybody might pick up, if you met somebody right there on that corner, it's coming through the windshield, through the hood, take the mirrors off, it's going to do something. Mm -hmm. Now, there, come on. It's been there a while? Or? It's, it's been, been there at least a while. week. It's been there a while. Right? If somebody, somebody cut it off, and there's a stump that big around sticking right out in the road. And Mike, you got that cone just above your place. 
when when somebody's coming down through there, it's it's mm -hmm. by that wash. That's, yeah. that, that's how yeah. they fix it in this town. And I tell you what, the yeah. day after Halloween, the wind, I went around, cleaned six, I dug out six of the uh, culverts in the road, and I took my chainsaw and cut ten trees out of the road. And guess when I came back by the town garage, guess who was there? Guess. Nobody. Ten o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. the day after it, I fixed the washouts on my road, Sharkey Road, mm -hmm. and four and a, a Scribner Road with my tractor. Mm -hmm. What day a week was that? That was Friday. That was Friday. The day I stopped at the garage and saw you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rick Cannon stopped when I was there. A tree blew down. I, I took one tree out of the road, um, and he probably came about a half an hour after I stopped to see yeah. you. I went back over. A tree had blown down. I took that one out of the road. You've got a town garage, you've got town people, it's after a heavy uh, rain, mm -hmm. there's washouts all over town, mm -hmm. trees down everywhere, nobody around, mm -hmm. locked up tighter in a gig. Mm -hmm. And an old fool like me is stupid enough to go around and do it because mm -hmm. it needs to be done. Somebody needs to do it. Mm -hmm. Dog Pond Road, there's two trees down over there, the cars couldn't get over, you could, somebody had driven over it with a pickup or something and smashed somebody out. Mm -hmm. It took me 20 minutes mm -hmm. to cut that tree out of the road. And clean it up and do it mm -hmm. proper. Mm -hmm. but As a taxpayer, I want to thank you personally for doing that. And well, there's one other thing there that be more really gets into my crowd back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. right. I said it was all done. But <laughs> and they're more cool. When these characters <laughs> take that loader okay. and they down. go out it's okay, and cut the tree off mm -hmm. and push it off the edge of the road mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. barely enough so cars can get through and never go back and clean it up. Mm -hmm. And boy, I can give you a lot of examples where it's happened. Mm -hmm. That is not right. Mm -hmm. They can make four or five cuts in that thing, throw it in the bucket, and go find a place where they can put it out of sight, out of the way of the road. Mm -hmm. And they don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right over in Winston Moore's Hill, two years ago, and this a long time, but mm -hmm. a tree fell in it. That log is still right in the ditch. Mm -hmm. Right now. Mm -hmm. It's about a ten foot spruce probably that big around all rotten mm -hmm. and it still lays right in the ditch mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of road work and I have never seen a hill as steep as that that you can hold without a decent ditch mm -hmm. so if you say there's nothing for them to do on Saturday morning <laughs> you want to hop my truck? I'll run your head around and I can show you a lot of things. I think, that that you, I, think, I think I need to have you make us a list. No, it won't do any good. We tried that with you and Skip. Uh huh. What, three years ago? Four years ago? 17, I saw it in a minute. Okay. Okay. It did absolutely no good whatsoever. You and I had this conversation mm -hmm. several times since then. Mm -hmm. You never once, I told you, I said, anytime you want to be shown, I took Brian a few times. Skip wouldn't go, and he, would, and he wouldn't go with him. Mm -hmm. Skip was and, supposed to call me. And he never did. Mm -hmm. And I, how many, you can do a call right near door yet. I told you, if you want to find out what's going on, you get in my pickup, and I'll drive you around and show you. I realize that you don't know road work. And you I, don't need to. That's not your right? job. That's not your job. That's right? not your you job. Need to, somebody needs to be overseeing. It's not your job, on. and it's not your job. But you've got to have somebody that does know road work. Yeah. But we're responsible to see to it that it gets done. That's right. Yeah. And that, that's not happening, and it hasn't happened. Excuse it's me, and this probably sounds way out of line, but you're not responsible to make sure it gets done. You're responsible to have a crew well, that's that will I make sure to get it done. The buck stops here, though. True. All right, I won't write you that. <laughs> Put it right where it belongs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, your shoulders are broad. You'll yeah, take it. Okay. <laughs> I'm buttoning ahead of my time, but it's kind of hard to see. It's well, we might as well, I mean, we we're talking about the roads, so we might as well just you? keep going. Yeah. yeah, if you want to talk, I think I'm okay well, with that. They're here yeah. to talk about it, so let's talk about it. I've got one. <laughs> I went up to visit my son probably two weeks ago Cabot Road, now, yeah. Cabot Road. Two weeks ago, and it was plowed just one blade wide. And if it keeps going that way, you're not going to be able to have two cars passing each other on that road. So and this you, is the flat part. And this is the part I don't know. I was told that they plowed it that way without the wings, because if you try to use the wing in the soft it's ground, the wing will pop up. Well, I don't know if that's true I'm or gonna, not true. I'm gonna, that's true. I'm going to elaborate on that, because what happened to our brand new truck last weekend, Greg took it over past the house, went up to Steve Hill on my property, plowing 
uphill, wing down, windrowing 15, 18 inch windrow of gravel. Bad enough so he dug two holes in the middle of that hill with chains on that truck. I don't know, I don't realize you guys don't know anything about trucks. I'm going to tell you right now, that probably took five years worth of work out of that truck. With chains on going uphill, he was full, he, he ruined the wing on that truck last year. Didn't he? How, much, how many thousand dollars did that cost? The low pro, um, actually that was underbuilt the wing, um, and they fixed it for free, they admitted. Well then, that, then, then it's okay if he smashes it up again and they'll fix it again for free? Is that what well, you're telling me? I, you know, I, I didn't, I'm not aware of that incident, I don't know anything well, about Well I can it. show you, see there's another thing that I can show you. He dug holes that deep in the middle of that hill with the wing down going uphill with, a, mm -hmm. with seven or eight or nine yards on a five yard truck. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know you don't understand that, you live on the blacktop, but what that does to that truck, it may not show up today or tomorrow, but this summer, next year, what he did to that truck up there is terrible. Mm -hmm. It'll show up, the rear end, the transmission, drive shafts. drive shafts, all kinds of things. It's just like when Bob Fair took the transmission out of that and lied about it and all that other stuff. You can't, I, I spent my whole life doing this. And when people stand around and tell me that I'm full of you know what, because they didn't do something. Well, Greg, and, Greg Adams has many years of experience on the road. Program. It don't matter. If he's got that much experience, mm -hmm. there's no excuse for him doing that. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. Yeah. That's why you have experienced people you hire mm -hmm. for that's not doing that sort of thing. Yeah, that's Especially two years in a row. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say that <clears throat> I've plowed a lot. There's Roads, driveways, yeah. landfills. I've plowed across trash. You name it, if it's had gone, I've probably done it. Mm -hmm. And I realize that it is not as easy to put a wing on a truck after it's snowed. But these trucks running around these roads with them wings hanging on the right hand side of them with 15, 18 yards of sand on them on soft roads right now, them wings should not be on it. Yeah. Them piles are big enough to open that whole road up. Mm -hmm. Them should be setting right at the garage. And when things are froze up, and you got snow banks, and it's time to cut a shelf in them. And I'm not saying put the wing all the way down to the ground and cut, push it right out into the swamp so somebody can drive out in there. I'm saying you leave it up that far, and you put a shelf in there so the next two or three storms you've got a place to put your snow. Mm -hmm. Then you come back with a grater and you push it back again the same way. Mm -hmm. But as far as running wings on these guys from the 1st of 15th October, I don't know when they put them on, but it was early. Yeah. Until it's froze, that is the worst thing you can do to a truck. Ask, ask Mike, we'll put your road look like all the way over to them. Wind road, wind road gravel, throw the ditches right full. Last two, come on. Mm -hmm. with, 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 the new ditching with, they did. Yeah, new, new ditching with, with the snow plows, not with the grade day. All the way. Furrows. 12, 15, 18 inches high. Just, just exactly what Chuck is talking about. But what my point is, and the point that he's making is, you don't have, the people that you have on that crew don't have the experience. Nobody's instructing it. There's no leadership. And they evidently, that's, I got three pages of my stuff. Mm -hmm. That there's no leadership. You and I talked about it, and you and I talked about it. And it needs to stop. Mm -hmm. This is taxpayer money, and I would hope that the, the most of 85, 90% of the people in this town don't have a clue about what's going on. Yeah, you're right there. Maybe 90%, I don't know how many. But I know that there's a lot of very unhappy people. I mean, right over next to Rick Cannon's over there right now. Oh. You get a rainstorm over there, in February or, or January or February, and it thaws that road out. Yeah, you're going to have a mud hole there. You're not going to get through with a lot of your mill. There's a log landing there. I don't know whether there's a spring above it or what, but the water just it's continually. It's this side of that. There. It's Rick Cannon just side it's, of that. Ain't got nothing to do I just, with it. I just the water it. coming down by Rick Cannon, it can't get to the culvert. Mm -hmm. I just came by. You know what? There's no sense in having a culvert there if the water can't get to it. Mm -hmm. Why is it the water can't get down 
because it, the side of the road is that much higher than the road. Burned. So, oh. got burned so it comes right out and it runs right into the road, comes right down there and sets in the pothole. This pothole's over there. Right by where it can. Well, before it froze over, they were that deep and that big around. Now the deep I hit them with my dump truck mm -hmm. and I thought the fuck up going off the road. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really did. Mm -hmm. But you guys, you need to you need to drive over there. I do. I drive straight. that fairly frequently, actually. Well, then you, you, you're satisfied. I've been over there. No, there are bad potholes there. I agree with the you. The school bus. I, I met the school bus the other day. Mm -hmm. If you guys are satisfied with that, you're not making the town crew go and fix that. You're derelict in your job. That is serious. Mm -hmm. So what is the, the fix truck, for it? Right huh? now? What's the fix for the it? The fix for it is right now. There with with three loads of gravel in the greeter. And you can force most of that water out and build that up so that we can get through the winter. You You've got to force the water out. You've got to force the water, but they don't have to do that. They'll dump, those, they'll dump the, the dirt right in the pothole. And all that's going to do is make mud. But it can be fixed if you know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is, and I guarantee you that they're not slowing that truck down when they drive through it. I have no idea. Well, I do. Mm -hmm. You've, you've seen them drive through it? Well, that's neither here nor there. But the problem know. is it needs to be fixed. There's lots of those places around town that need to be fixed. And, and, and if you don't make them, they're not going to do it. Lynn is right on that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't force that water out of there, you're going to have mud four feet deep over there. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Because I don't know if you've ever made a mud pie when you were a kid or something, but the more dirt you put with water, the deeper the mud gets. Mm -hmm. And the road is the same way. Mm -hmm. You've got to cut that out, force that water out of there, and get it built up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but it can be done. And oh, it can be done. It, and, and you don't just ignore it until spring. Mm -hmm. That school board, I, I, I met him right there. I, I went over to look and see how bad it was. And I, mm -hmm. I got three phone calls in the last two days. Mm -hmm. That. You better let me see now. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, you better go look again. So I know. And I met the school bus this afternoon right now. Mm -hmm. It's not passable at over two miles an hour. Mm -hmm. That's right by Rick Cannon. Right place. by Rick Cannon, just mm -hmm. the other side of Rick Cannon. Yeah, yeah. That's the spot really I was late. talking about, where there's a log landing just a little further down. There's a water, little further down. Yeah. There's water running down from but that. This water, road. this water is coming from down by Rick's. Mm -hmm. And coming down, and it can't get into that culvert. I don't know mm -hmm. if that culvert's plugged. It just can't get into it. Mm -hmm. The culvert's not doing anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Those same kind of things need to be fixed, not ignored. Mm -hmm. But well, the thing they're not going to do anything unless somebody directs them to do it. The thing that is, and that's where I go back to the fact, it really shouldn't be your guys' responsibility. You need to have somebody that knows that. And when he comes to you and say, hey, I got a problem over on the county road. It's going to take us a day with a grader and six or eight loads of gravel. You're supposed to say, pat him on the back and say, "Good job, go for it." Mm -hmm. You know, doable this winter though, graveling it and everything. Or? If if well, you get right it after it, could be fixed. Right? It could be fixed today or tomorrow. Or the next day. Frozen, it's gonna be yeah. fifty something degrees. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow you could fix it. Yeah. But you wait till next week when it gets down to. And above, you kiss it goodbye. But it's got to be done properly. You got to force the water out. You got to go over there. But nobody here knows that. Nobody in, in this crew. Has you can leave the potholes. You can leave some of the potholes, but you got to get rid of the water. Because right. if you fit, if you go mud. over there, yeah, you. No, they did it in front of my house. They just put me in some mud. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 there's no way to get rid of it. I mean, you got to get rid of the water. Yeah. It, it, an old man told me a long, long time ago when I first got into this. He says, you know what? People lie to you about everything. But if you find a place for that water to go where it doesn't have resistance, you won't have any trouble. And you know what? He is right. You get rid of the water, you can put some gravel in there and it'll have enough. I just done it up on... Oh, out in Hadron. Guy called me up, he said, I got ruts in my driveway, snow on the ground, top of it's froze. I said, wow, really? He said, yeah, I know, I should have done it two weeks ago, but we're renting a place. I said, well, the only thing I can do is go up and cut all the snow off, get it down to the ground, and I put some ledge in, and I'd probably fix it. And I did, and tracked it in with the dump truck, and it hardened up good, and he's happier now. But 
you you just can't go put a load of material or two loads of material or whatever and grade that off because it won't do it. That soft spot is going to be there and the first hole goes through it's going to start that pothole. Yeah. And the second vehicle goes through it's just going to get deeper and deeper and it'll be right back where it was. If you cut that out, get rid of the water and bring that up so that it's actually higher. There's a dip right there. There's a little dip and it starts up the hill like that. Get rid of that dip. Put three or four loads in there. And use a grader, not the bucket loader. Mm -hmm. These guys running around with the bucket loader, bag dragging things, thinking that they're shaping a road out. You, you said, now you brought the bucket loader. I got uh -oh. to <laughs> This is why there's a couple things. Do you have any idea what driving that bucket loader around with a bucket of gravel in it or sand in it, up these back road does to that machine? Mm. Then final drive's taken yeah, out. Yeah, you don't know it yet. I'll tell no, you. I don't. And I'm not going to lie to you, you can okay. go check it out. Okay. People that know. That takes the bushings out of that. It drives it in. The packings out of the pistons will shorten the life of that machine by 30%. Mm -hmm. These guys are doing this continually. They did it last week by my house with a bucket of gravel or something in that mm -hmm. thing. That changed on driving that bucket loader with a, with a bucket loader all over town. You got a dump truck. So. Mm -hmm. Nobody's stopping it from doing this stuff. That's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And today, every day, I went out at 20 after 8 this morning. Went over, the bucket loader sitting over there. I told you a hundred times, I told you, running. Mm -hmm. I came back at 2 o'clock, still sitting there running. Mm -hmm. It runs every day, all day, all summer, all winter. Mm -hmm. You know what that does? It does. The resale value of that piece of machinery? I've been over there. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 11 o'clock in the morning. I get over there and the loader's running. The hour meeting they're in the salt. The time yeah. Just you know what happened? You've got a $300,000 machine, all of a sudden you've got 10,000 hours on the motor. And you've got 3,000 hours on the rest of the loader. Perfect loader, just like brand new. But the engines wear out. And the hour meter says it's got 10,000 hours on it. You go to trade it, you know what's going to happen? You give it away. Because they, they have to resell it off that. Because now those are new enough so they have computers. Mm -hmm. You can't lie, you can't take the hour meter out the way we used to. And the hour meter goes to a million hours. Yeah. So uh, I have a question in hearing that. When, when they do their weekly reports on machinery and act, you know, activity, how many hours they had on the grader, how many hours they had on the, on, on the loader, do, do you have that information? In other words, when they give you their, their weekly summary of what they did and what they used to do it with. And I guess what I'm trying to say is if that loader is sitting there idling and that hour meter is running up and then they've actually used it for six hours on the job for the, for the week, are they showing the six hours or are they taking the time off that meter? I think, just, I mean, Greg keeps a log um, and it's basically for the work that the that the equipment does, so trucks, grader, bucket loader, if it's, you know, if it's running all day long just idling, that, that, that's not recorded. Right. So you wouldn't have, a, that being said, you wouldn't have a fair representation of the hours of service that vehicles had because you've got a lot of idling time, but mm -hmm. it still shows up in that meter and anybody who's getting ready to purchase that would make the assumption that yeah. that's how many hours that it's all been hours. working on all those hours. Because you're sitting there idling at more and the hour meter runs like you're working. Oh yeah. So you're not getting the biggest bang for your buck that way. No. You ain't getting no bang no, for your buck. No, but on top of that is, what's the reason for that? That's a question you people need to ask. Well, it's basically to keep the, like when it's cold, to keep it warm no. so that it's ready to work. Is that, is, that's you, what I've been told. You, that, who told you that? Greg Parkers. Well then I'm telling you, mm -hmm. All three of you, yeah, they shouldn't be doing that. that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're never gone for more than an hour. Well, if you well, can't get in that today, how that wouldn't work today, I went over there today and the doors were wide open, but the loaded saw, they didn't, it probably wasn't too cold. Right. Yeah. It's plugged in, it sets outside, you're ruining that machine mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, But that is ridiculous to think that you can't, you've got to come back and get into a warm loader. You aren't gone for more than an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, and hopefully he's talking, talking about the hydraulic oil being warm. You well, know, in the morning you do if, that, but if, you don't do it the rest of the day. If, if it's 20 below it zero. Indoors when the trucks are gone, is there any reason it couldn't be in the shop? No. Be in the shop. But if it's 20 below, 
I can see let it run because that hydraulic water. Or stick would it use, in the shop. Yeah, yeah, that would be ideal. But at 20 below, how often are you going to have your trucks out? Yeah, it's true. Not very much. Well, you aren't going to use a loader. It's going to be plugged right. in sitting there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Unless it's idling. It doesn't snow in 20 Well, they're going to snow. They get plugged in if they're not there. But what I'm getting, except the other night, my boy went by and the machine set out there with the lights on and they got them all night. Mm -hmm. But it's so much going on or not going on that it's ridiculous. And nobody's in charge of those people. They need, they need oversight. Mm -hmm. uh, that, evidently, the way you and I talked was going to be your job three years ago. And as far as I'm concerned, you failed. Well, I help them with the paperwork. I basically, that's my job. I, my job as a select board member, I suppose, is to oversight. But, um, you know, I just basically trust them that they know what they're doing. You and I sat in your, stood in your driveway for two or three hours mm -hmm. the last time, probably, what, two years ago, three years mm -hmm. ago, whenever this started. And I told you that, and you, and you agreed with me that I said, you need to have some oversight over Greg and the other rest of mm -hmm. the crew. You've got to do more than just do the paperwork. They're failing terribly on all this. I've got a whole list of things here. Right. Well, Mike, you know, basically, like you say, I, I don't know well, stuff about that. I mean, um, that's, that not, that's not my realm. Well, I can make it your realm if you uh -huh. come and spend some time with uh -huh. me. And well, I'll do all three of you. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be your realm. Really, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You hired a guy to do that. Yeah. And he's you not know what? It. Mm -hmm. It's... You and I talked about it once in the 90s, sure, but you and I talked about it once in the 90s. You know what? I'd love to drive around here and pick out the things on the road that really ought to be taken care of. I'll do it for nothing. And either bring you a list or take it to Greg and say, hey, you got some problems here. Well, I, I tried that and you know what I got out of that. Well, I think sometimes, um, Lynn, your approach, you know, <laughs> just kind of gets the hackles up on, I mean, it's tr was true of Harry, it's true now. It's true, and it but you want to know a little secret? You, you guys get my hackle duck to start with, so mine, uh -huh. that's, so it's, it's a <laughs> reciprocating deal. It's fair then, right? That's right. <laughs> well, and the thing is, what bothered me about the whole thing was that I, with you and Skip, and I offered and offered and offered, and I wasn't hollering and yelling at you or you know, threatening you or anything else. No, no and you and Skip, conversations with that's you. right, and you and Skip blew me off like I was, you never ever said another word. I offered and offered and offered to help you guys. You never took me up once. The only person that ever took out and took any interest was Brian. I'd take Brian out and show him what was going on. Right. You did offer. Um, I mentioned it to the road crew and they just... Well, they're not going to. Right. They don't because want they don't want Greg, Greg knows that he knows way more about road work than I do. And that's his statement. He's made it separate. Which is fine. I don't... Okay, well, I'm not talking about that. He's not qualified to be doing what he's doing, and I'm trying to, to fix it with you people. Because you people, he works for you, and you work mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how it is in uh, public service. Mm -hmm. But it's been going on for three years now, and it has to stop. Mm -hmm. We can't keep this up. And I'm getting, again, but I want to get to the truck issue. Okay, I would like to stop this conversation at 7 o'clock so that we can get on to other town business. We've been on it now for about 45 minutes. Well, when we're going to get on, we've got a whole bunch of stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get up here where I can hear talk to you. Yeah, Sarah Dale right there. Take the hot seat. Did you get the hot seat? We're going to have to put a lot into 10 minutes. I'm going to say something 20 minutes ago. Well, uh, yeah. that was my fault. <laughs> Chuck took all your time. I did. Your know. distinguished colleague, we'll call it, just on the Congress. <laughs> really? I've, done, I've done some research into your sand business, and I've done some research into your truck business. And I went and talked to truck people today. Mm -hmm. Now I want to know, can you, what's the deal on the, on that new truck, 10 wheeler that you? That we're going to be buying? Yeah, that's going to be. Mm -hmm. Have Maybe we made any down payments or anything on it yet? We've made a commitment to, to purchase it. Okay, then what, what you need to think about is to undo it. I want you to tell me where you got the information that that truck needs to be replaced. We are trying to get a seven-year cycle on replacing trucks. Um, Hardwick does that. Other towns do that. Um, so that's basically what we're, what we're going by. So in other words, you're going to buy another brand new one next year? No. Nope. No. You just, then that's, that's a misinformation. We're going, to, we're going to try to hang on to the second truck for a couple, three years right. so that we can... Okay, I just went to a professional away. truck place today. Yep. They keep them 10 to 12 years. Mm -hmm. How that many miles where, on that truck? That was with who? Newton. Newton's. 
I have said, no idea how many miles are on that truck. You need to tell me. I mean, somebody, one of you guys, you got to go with me tomorrow morning over there to tell me. Laura probably that. has that information. I mean, you got a key? We have, we have records of it. Laura, Laura can tell you. Yeah. I got the right. time if you wanted something to go over. But I need to go. This, sorry, that truck, that truck is nowhere near worn out. Two hundred, two hundred nineteen thousand. We know it's not worn out, the, the, and we're getting a pretty good rate as a trade-in for sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. That doesn't even cover the price of the plow and the sander. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which truck? I don't know. Truck number it's the thirteen, the right? Yeah, two thousand thirteen. Truck number one, I think it is. Ten thousand. Yep. As taxpayers, months. you're going to have us paying four on four hundred thousand dollars worth of trucks forever. Mm -hmm. This town can't stand that. You just bought a hundred. What do you got from my house? Seventy-eight thousand. Seventy-eight thousand. Not even broke in. Mm -hmm. It ain't even running good. It's yet. even. Mm -hmm. It didn't even begin. That's even. That even really pisses me off. Easy, man. Easy. You said you learned to many a calm. Now, what do you believe that these things should be? Getting that truck, for that truck, and stuff. That truck, that truck should be running at a, at a town like this, this deal right here. Minimum of two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand miles for that same application. Mm -hmm. wow. Ten to twelve years. I truck, my truck that my boy drives up and down the road here has got over a million miles on it. Mm -hmm. My first dump truck. My first dump truck was a Ford nine thousand. And 850,000 miles on it when I bought it. This is taxpayer money. This is ridiculous. I mean, this is so... If you'd have said 175,000, I wouldn't have, but I'm pissed now, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, wait a minute. And I did the price on sand. i got to get these figures to you. Mm -hmm. I went to three people today. Uh, we're paying 4,000... I mean, uh, for 4,000 yards of uh, sand, mm -hmm. we're paying, uh, what is it, I got it right here, $14,000, so $28,000. Mm -hmm. You're paying 14000 up front, and you're paying 14000 mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. and that's for how much sand? 4,000 yards. 4,000 yards. Well, I figured, it, I've got it all figured up, and what I come up with is, if we can get it hauled, um, they'll haul it for thirteen twenty-five delivery. Mm -hmm. Your truck is costing you $33,500 a year and just in payments. Mm -hmm. Now you probably don't, I ain't keeping track. I need to know what you're paying for insurance, what you're paying for tires, what you're paying for oil, what you're paying for continual maintenance and depreciation. Mm -hmm. And you only 73,000 miles you haven't even begun. That truck. Mm -hmm. How often have you changed the oil? Ask Greg that. Greg, okay. Yeah. I'm asking you that though. I have and, a lot of that too. Hmm? I have a lot of that. So I have, have records of it, yeah. Well, I, just, I just don't know, know those things, you know. And this truck is good. Either sell it and we get by with one ten wheeler and that new truck, that new single axle you've got, and a one ton and a, and a spare truck. Mm -hmm. But this town has the same amount of equipment as Callus has, the same amount of crew, only two of our guys are part time and two are full time. They have 93 miles of road and we're doing 34 miles of road. So we have 42 miles. Well, you know, well, I'm talking about winter time. And you know, does, that, Woodbury. does that count West Woodbury? Uh, 42, yeah. So what, yeah. Was your, what was your uh, delivered, they don't do anything up your there delivered the cost delivered, per yard of sand? Delivered price from is 13 and a quarter mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. that's, per yard, that's delivered. That's delivered. And that gives you $53,000 total. Right. Sand and trucking. Mm -hmm. And they're about the same. Uh, Keeney was a little bit less because he, if he did the whole four thousand, he'd do it for eighty dollars an hour. He'd do about for about six thousand dollars less. Mm -hmm. But Newton was about the same. But the, the information I was after about Newton was he has he has seventy trucks of his own. He mm -hmm. knows more about trucks. Mm -hmm. And and I that was my main thing to find out. Now, I didn't I didn't have any idea. I mean this really I got to tell you, that really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. Are you guys thinking that you can turn that truck in for sixty thousand dollars? Which is isn't even the price you've given them the truck. Mm -hmm. It isn't even the price of the of the the plow, the wing, and the sand body. Mm -hmm. What do you figure they're turning around selling it for? Probably eighty or ninety thousand. Just like oh, the last least, one. At least eighty. The last one, I remember I told you about that. It went up there. I tried to buy that truck and I was gonna sell the sander and the body off of it. Mm -hmm. And I could have bought that truck and it went for 
$58,000 dropped in them, and mm -hmm. I could have had that truck for eighteen dollars or $19,000 and sold the body. And this, this is another thing. You're doing this, that standard, no more, you've got, you've got five rigs here to plow with. Mm -hmm. And no roads. That sander and plow and wing should go on at least two trucks. There's no reason in the world that you're turning over eighty something thousand dollars worth of plow body with another truck. Mm -hmm. If you buy the same kind of truck, another thing Newton told me today, you can go you, did you price a truck out anywhere else? No, we didn't. Okay, right there. He just bought a new uh, triaxle truck for Du Bois down there because he was salesman for uh, mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Boys for years. Saved him nineteen thousand dollars on a brand new truck. Mm -hmm. You guys should do the same thing. You don't have to buy Freightliner. You know why you bought Freightliners before? Because that's what Harry wanted. When we stuck with Freightliners, because that's what the road crew wanted. Yeah. That's what they wanted. Well, yeah. they don't. I, I'm a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. I want the cheapest, best piece of equipment that I can get. Mm -hmm. And you should too. And the rest of you guys. Everybody in this room should. We're mm -hmm. taxpayers. Mm -hmm. We're paying for this. That truck right there, at 75,000 miles, isn't even a third worn out. Mm -hmm. But they don't take care of it. And Harry made this statement, and Greg has made this statement, if we don't take care of it, we'll get a new one at the end of the lease. I've never heard them oh, say Oh, I that. have? I don't care if you've heard it or not. And I know they take care of them. They, they do a lot of maintenance on those trucks. I mean, they're both, Greg is a mechanic. They're both mechanics. I know a lot of mechanics that don't mm -hmm. even get, have a vehicle they can drive to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to go and look at them. Mm -hmm. This is my business. It's what I do. And mm -hmm. Something that I've kicked around for a while too is you turn in a truck in that's got 78,000 miles on it, or whatever it was, mm -hmm. around 78,000 miles. Well, it'll have more when it gets treated in it. Yeah. True. Not much. Mm -hmm. But if you can get the records of how that truck's been maintained, we have, we have those records. I'm not saying the one you got, I'm saying mm -hmm. one to come from another town. Mm -hmm. Them are the ones you should be buying. You can buy them for a third of what you can lease them for, mm -hmm. and you can get five or six years out of them. Because mm -hmm. them trucks, the, until they got 300,000 miles on them, they shouldn't even need a tune-up. They shouldn't even, other than the oil change and everything, you shouldn't touch them. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's running for 78,000 miles and got all the bugs worked out of it. it isn't even bro that isn't even break-in. Mm -hmm. No. I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's not even break-in on, mm -hmm. on a large truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100,000 miles, and then they'll take it in, tune it up when yeah. you're driving a tractor. Mm -hmm. And these trucks are not being, most of the miles, most of them 78,000 miles is hauling sand up and down the bike top. Mm -hmm. Probably and 80%. Then you're not getting any brush cut. Your culverts aren't getting clean. Your crew's mm -hmm. not working. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys, I, I, I'll give you another example. I went over there this morning. That excavator sets over there, frozen into ground. Hasn't been greased. The tracks are solid, full of dirt frozen mm -hmm. right up. What happened if you froze the culvert? It would come off rain like it did the year I was there. You need to go dig out a culvert. Mm -hmm. You can't move it. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that okay? Is that, well, is is there, that, is where that does it get, there's no place to store it no, inside. What do you mean? The tracks haven't, the been, tracks shoveled haven't been shoveled out and it's sitting in the dirt. It's sitting in you put it on tires, you, 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 you don't leave a goddamn track mm -hmm. machine sitting in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And as bad as those tracks are right now, you probably tear a track car off it for you. Gotta but but that's not my point. The person that knows what he's doing and cares about his job and cares about this town and cares about the people doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Period. So where do you find a person like that? They're all over the place. You just really? gotta look around and hire them. Mm -hmm. In town? You got any you in town, town now? now. <laughs> we don't. That's what I mean. Well, have, you have you tried? Have, have you tried? We have, a we have to right. bid for. Well, when we put um, when we put stuff out for bid um, for the last uh, full time person, we did. Um, your son applied, and Tim applied, and then Greg Adams also applied, and you know he had all this experience, and that's kind of who we went with. Um, but you know. But you got to have management. I don't care mm -hmm. if you got the best people. If you had management over there, mm -hmm. he could train people and mm -hmm. teach people. He won't, Greg won't teach anybody, he won't let anybody do anything but in the truck. He don't, Greg Adams was supposed to come in and be a grader operator. If he's a grader operator, I'm an uh, airplane pilot. Mm -hmm. And everything they do, I mean, it's just, it's just completely, completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And it needs to stop. The taxpayers, I, I told Paul, and I told you, and I'll tell you. 
I hate to do this, but if this doesn't, I'm going to take all of this information and go to the newspaper and try to drum some interest in this. And it comes town meeting, and everybody in town tells me that I'm full of you know what, then that's fine. You keep right on doing things the way you're doing mm -hmm. is fine. But you're, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars wasting mm -hmm. because of mismanagement. You've got two young guys over there that should be being taught how to run a piece of equipment. They have been. Peter Daly has learned, been working on the greater, all of the equipment there, Peter's been working on. Yeah, yep. he's been working on it. The thing is, he's not a greater operator, and who's going to teach him? Well, the people that we have hired as the greater operator. Well, he's not. Him. Yeah. He's not. Mm -hmm. He goes up and down the road, and he scuffs in the potholes. He don't clean the edges, he don't clean the ditches, they don't, mm -hmm. do, they don't do any of the stuff that mm -hmm. a greater operator does. Mm -hmm. None of it. Mm -hmm. You're under the impression, I could, like I said, I could show you. I showed you, and I can show you what I can show you. But one, before, it, it really made me uh, disgusted because you and I had a, a pretty decent uh, conversation mm -hmm. in private. Mm -hmm. And you acted to me like you would be interested in learning some of this stuff. And you that's know, as far as it went. I have so little time to do, you know, there's so many other facets of being in this seat. That I, you know, I, I have hardly any time for myself to do any of my own stuff. You know, I probably spend a lot of our okay. just and I'm, I'm happy to learn. Okay, but my, um, I'm, how I'm going to answer that is that you need to sit down, all of you need to sit down with Greg Parker and make him a foreman. Mm -hmm. He is a foreman. No, he's not. We need to make, I, I make him a foreman. Mm -hmm. Make him, look at these things. All these things we're talking about are not mm -hmm. getting done because mm -hmm. of him. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to know. Mm -hmm. And you're letting him get by with all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at that motor sitting over there. That's, that's ridiculous. It's piling sand with an excavator. Yeah, well, that's terrible. Completely. Come, mm -hmm. You just don't do that stuff. It is mm -hmm. not, it's beyond belief. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. There's no other explanation for it. You don't, and he shouldn't be doing that stuff. If he's boss, mm -hmm. and he should be out training these guys. They don't, Hit the, the two Gregs were seen last Friday riding, or Thursday riding around down to All Metals together in the one mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. They don't need to go anywhere together. Mm -hmm. And they certainly don't need to go to West Woodbury in the wintertime. No. Right. They actually did have to fix the culvert up there. With, with what? The, the, there was a logger who was logging further down on the road and he, they had to bring him a couple culverts and the logger was going to put them in. One of them was plugged and the road was eroded. So that's why they were, they were there in West Yeah, well, it didn't look good. They didn't do the work, he just took a culvert up somebody. He took a couple culverts up, at least one, maybe two, and um, you know there was a plug culvert, so he consulted with the logger to tell him what needed to be done, and the logger, as far as I know, did the work. I just, we got, there's so many issues, and, this, and I'm going to be on the agenda and tell them, and I'm going to be here every Monday night. Mm -hmm. For the rest of the winter. Okay. Every other Monday night. <laughs> Every other Monday night. <laughs> but I tell you what, I've got a list and I, I'm only part of it tonight. Mm -hmm. And you guys, I'm, I don't know how to be more forceful. I won't pissed off until she told me that. Now mm -hmm. I'm pissed. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <you're all. laughs> yes. This is now it's just beyond ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it's well, I think you know it's it's good to have Lynn come in. He's definitely got. 60 years of experience in the equipment, and we don't, you know, so to find out, well, you know, I'm not there, I don't know what's yeah. going on, like, I didn't know they are piling sand with an exit, I've run, I've owned a dump truck, I know some of this stuff, but I don't know what they're doing, because mm -hmm. I'm not over there, the same as you, mm -hmm. just don't, mm -hmm. not there. Yeah, there's some practices that they shouldn't be doing that they are, mm -hmm. and, you know, like I said, if they're stacking it with an excavator, that's not a very practical way or effective way to do it. There's so much, there's so right. many, li and a lot of it's little things, but little things make big things. So that, like mm -hmm. that excavator, leaving it set over there. We, if we needed that for something, an emergency, it's unusable. The I greater, didn't know that was frustrating. The greater sets out mm -hmm. there with no wing on it. What if we had a two-foot snowstorm? We could have a two-foot snowstorm mm -hmm. anytime. Mm -hmm. So the excavator should have been, what, set up on set tires? Set up on tires, you got all the They must tires. have all kinds you of clean, that first. Clean out the yeah, tires. Yeah, yeah, general yeah. bulldozer lag maintenance, when you're done, you clean all those tracks, tracks out so there's no mud in there. And, and you get them up out of mud. You can leave any track machine. You grease it, right, so it'll move. Hasn't been greased. Right, is it okay? Another one, the old spare dump truck. You've got these guys sitting over there playing cards. They'll admit to that. When they get done plowing snow and they know it's going to plow, they know it's going to plow two, three hours later, they'll sit in there and play cards and go far. You've got that old dump truck. 
that we had that we used to file that do the spray the road with. They got the chloride in it. Yeah. Okay, that truck. <clears throat> when when I was there, we sandblasted the body, the frame, painted the whole thing. Hadn't been touched since. They put a new transmission in it two years ago when when Bob Fair took mm -hmm. the transmission out of it. They got chains on it. They put the plow on it. The plow was sitting right in the dirt, frozen in. The sanders in the back, full of dirt, salt, body up. So what are you going to do if you, one of them other trucks break down? You need that. Mm -hmm. Well, why would you go to all the work of putting that sander in the back of that on the back of that truck and park it over there in the corner and not keep it and clean that sander out and grease it so that if you needed it and put the plow up on a block of wood so that if it froze so that if you needed that truck mm -hmm. you could go over there and start it and put a load of sand or salt in it and use it. No, you got to you drag it over there and put it. First of all, you're going to have to jackhammer the blade out of the dirt. Second thing, you're going to have to put the truck in the garage for a day or two to thaw out the sander. It's, it's common sense things that mm -hmm. cost money and are stupid. Mm -hmm. You can't fix stupid. Mm -hmm. And that's what bothers me. And I see this stuff and I've been looking at it for three years since you and I had a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's got continually worse since mm -hmm. then, not better. Mm -hmm. I talked it over with Brian until he's sick of hearing me, <laughs> but I'm not going to stop. There's nobody else, evidently, that has, well, whatever it takes, to, whatever I've got to do on like, which is quite a lot, but mm -hmm. that doesn't matter. What I'm getting at is, I know what's, what's wrong, and I know how to make it right, and, it, and you can do it by saving a lot of money. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. There's so many things, like, like, like I just told you about that other so truck. So it's 10 after 7, and you know, I appreciate right, so what we do. I was going to throw something out just okay. so we can get okay. some resolution to something. I'm willing to go over with Lynn mm -hmm. and compile a list of the short term yep. things like the sander frozen that we could. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, we just need a commitment to we're going to give Greg direction to fix these things. Because mm -hmm. I didn't understand. Who can do that? We can do that. Well, you need to do it, but you haven't. Right, mm -hmm. but, that, but that's my proposal is that mm -hmm. we'll make the list, but the expectation is that we're going to give this to Greg. He needs to do these things, mm -hmm. and it's just going to be short-term yeah. things, and, and right. then moving forward, the expectation is that this won't happen in the future, like leaving right. the motor running. You didn't take the first step. Correct. Mm -hmm. first if you don't take the first step, we write it biggest down so thing, it's fair to Greg. Biggest thing, my biggest thing right now is i got to get a commitment to you guys. You need to put off this truck purchase thing. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. If you think that I'm a... SOB now, you order that truck when there's absolutely no reason for it. So I'm going to be same ugly. deal. If you got why, why does Hardwick Electric? Or why does I don't Hardwick care what they department. do. Maybe they got plenty mm -hmm. of money to spend. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what what the neighbor does. And a lot of other towns have. I don't kind of a care. Seven -year turnover. I don't care. I know when that truck tour around the seventy-five thousand miles isn't it. Those taxpayers out there, if they're not smart enough to do something about it, that's their fault. Well, why do other towns do it? I don't know. I don't care. Mm -hmm. This is Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Well, they have, must have a reason. Do you mind that I might... Have you got a reason? It's because they're doing it? It's not because it's one hill. They're doing it so that they can be sure to have a reliable machine that's going to work, you know, when they need it for winter plowing. So you think that, the, that that's the only way to do it? That every six years we can spend $250,000? You do your maintenance. No more than 75,000 miles in six years is not wearing out a truck. If well, you we're, we're, going be, we're going to be spending about $60,000. You've got $60,000 trade in and you're spending yeah. 220000 That's a lot more than sixty. Mm -hmm. It's not two, it's $150,000. you are not buying that truck and pile for $150,000. You paid one hundred eighty for the single axle one. Oh, we, we didn't pay one hundred eighty for that either. So... We've probably got the numbers on that. So, right. here, yeah. So, anyway. uh, does that work for you guys? I'm willing to. Well, shoot. I'm not going to rest until I get a commitment. I, you need to. We we need you need to come up with something here. Well, I would say we probably need another but, meeting with Lynn that can be a longer meeting that mm -hmm. we can kind of sit down and start looking at what we should be looking at more. Right. Because right, I get I get our time issues, and I think if we split up. And I've what we about. should do is establish a town road commissioner and have that person be the person that well, I'm going to exactly. tell you right now. That is exactly what you want to do. Right. I told him and I told him. And it, it doesn't need to be a full-time person. It needs to be somebody that understands I, roads mm -hmm. and goes out and to do it. comes so back and tells you three. I would offer to do it. This For is no what way. really ought to mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. But the first thing that's going to happen, 
you know what's going to happen over there. So they're going to walk. Well, one of them is. The rest of them. Won't. No, I would imagine that at least two of them will. Well, that's too bad. You want to know something? Yeah. You want to know something? This is a two-man job. Mm -hmm. This town was done. Bernard did it. Johnny Gilbert did it. Max Fair did it with one dump truck and a grader. Mm -hmm. Two men. A six-wheel dump truck. A six-wheel dump truck with no wing. Mm -hmm. You say, well, we don't do things that way anymore. Well, it's the same amount of roads mm -hmm. as there was then. A little less, but you know, with little, less wood variant. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But what my point is, what my point is, I'll, I'll offer to do this. Mm -hmm. But you guys got to face up to it. If, so what? If they, if they don't want to be here, and do the right job correctly, give them a chance. I don't care that, but I'll do it for, for zero money. I don't need the money and I don't need benefits and I don't, I'm retired. Mm -hmm. Could the process be something like maybe the next meeting, Lynn comes in with a list? Well, that's what I'm willing to work with him to make. Around here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's what Chuck was. Chuck yep. said to hear this too, yeah. And, Just and listening here, you've got a, a small window of opportunity to fix a few of these problems. Yeah, that we need some to of the, some of these spots in the roads that really if need to be taken care of this week, or you're going to have so much mud over there, mm -hmm. that 10 wheeler ain't going to get through there with a pair of oxen hooks. That's when this girl to spend in whatever you're going to spend for a truck mm -hmm. that isn't even broken yet. Mm -hmm. That is so disgusting. So what should we be trading at? Our trucks in for mileage or hours or, or rust or whatever the well it shouldn't be one of, that's another thing. okay I I can't but I just Lynn, can't. we, we I need I'm sorry I'll tell you what really all right I'll, I'll, I'll leave okay. but the only way I'll leave is if you if you tell me that you table that 200 that new truck until I have another meeting we won't be the truck wouldn't even be arriving until I don't care about that if you if you do that if you order it then you've got to pay something on it uh huh you made an agreement. Stop we have that. made an agreement. All right, put it off for another month or six or six weeks. We, we have plenty of time to put it off. Okay, yeah. do, promise so. me you'll do that, but otherwise I ain't leaving. <laughs> We're so, not going to buy so, it. For so here's, the, here's are you, you got time tomorrow morning. I'll go over to the shop with you. Yep. We'll you make a it. list of the short term yep. things over there yep. that we can accomplish that are easily accomplished. And if Greg wants to accomplish them, I'm fine. I don't need to be over there if he'll, if he'll buckle under. Mm -hmm. But if he won't, mm -hmm. I want you to tell me and I'm willing to take this over. Mm -hmm. And I'll work with this crew all summer and I'll teach these guys how to run greater, how to run loader. Mm -hmm. Had to run all this equipment. None of them know how to do any of that. Mm -hmm. And they need to be trained. Mm -hmm. They can get in it and move it, but that's not operating. Right, Chuck? <laughs> Absolutely. There's such a difference. Mm -hmm. well, my it's unbelievable. Experience. I know the difference. And, <laughs> and I'm willing to do that. But mm -hmm. if they don't, if they get to hackle up, well, I'm more than willing to see them do it. Give them, see if they can, see if they're willing to fix this stuff that needs to be fixed. If they're mm -hmm. not, we'll go a different route. And I'll come back mm -hmm. next meeting. With another list, mm -hmm. like I said, I got to have that promise that you're not going to buy that truck. That. We're, we're going to buy it tomorrow. No, so two weeks. What, no, but when we're over there, we're can you inspect weeks. that truck with me yep. and show me? Yep, I'll go over. I'll go over all that equipment mm -hmm. and, I, and the stuff outside and show you what's not being done. Mm -hmm. just a, so yeah, list that can, you'll probably take a. I'll take a pad and I'll make a list, and we'll have yep. some yep. information. Because again, I I do other things, not buy town trucks. So mm -hmm. I don't yep. know. I don't know the time frames of when you should replace those trucks. But you see, this, well, this is for next week, but this all cement, we'll, we'll put all that on paper. There's so yeah, many things that have been done to that, that equipment. You say they've maintained it, they're not. They're not maintaining the loader, they're not maintaining the grader, they're not maintaining the trucks. How do you know that? Because I go over there and look, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. It's my tax dollars. Mm -hmm. you can, I do this for a living. But how can my, you tell if they've my, changed the oil without looking at it? I can't tell if they changed the oil, but I but can you tell, can if, tell they, if they've been greased. If they've been greased, if it's been washed. Yeah. There's no reason, six years, there's no reason those trucks aren't sandblasted and painted every year. When and, I was, and when They've actually painted the bodies every, every year. And when the mud is that deep in your excavator tracks and it right. throws right tight, yeah, that's, that's not maintenance. Okay, all right. And there's a lot of things over there, there mm -hmm. but that's my okay. But right. I'll go and look. But if that's the case, and anything they've done right, well, if we got to deal with it. We got to deal with it. I don't know these things. I know the road yeah. things. I've been vocal about mm -hmm. some of these things, but the stuff at the shop. I'm more than willing to. I'm more than willing to give them the credit for what they. What I think they've done right, also. Mm -hmm. I'm not that big an SLB. You may, you may think I am, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't think you are. Right. Well, what time? The only thing I know you guys are ready to go on to something else, but. Please, don't forget your glasses. Send them no, over with the grader and fix that road on the county road. Mm -hmm. Are you There's not a person that... Are you sending them over there tomorrow? I will mention that to them. For well, I'm going to go over. 
Yeah. I'm afraid they're not going to do it right. Do they have gravel there? Yeah, they have gravel at the garage. But I'm if afraid. they push water out, they really can't screw it up. Like that. Yeah. Well, All they got to do is get it high. They're not going to. They're not going to push the water out. I can tell you right now, they can't even hit a mud hole with a load of gravel when it's. How are they going to go over there and do that? It just. Mm -hmm. I, I just. Tell what you. time, Lynn? Whatever works for you. Oh, uh, eight o'clock. Yep. Can you throw it to the garage? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we got a but all. We got to keep it to a couple hours. So yep. I got to get back yep. to work. Yep. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I want to go. I got another. Well, I got another thing. But I'm gonna. I want to go check on the excavator. Price of that it needs to be treated. We need a rubber tire excavator. We need. Mm -hmm. We can get rid of that because he wants that completely rebuilt. Mm -hmm. We've caught him driving it up the road three miles before. Mm -hmm. Done that several times. You can't do that kind of stuff. And that and they, I know that's what the undercarriage is completely gone. So he wants to do one to carry. You know, we're gonna. I got. I got a whole plan for that and saving. Mm -hmm. Saving twenty to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I know I can save this down one hundred fifty thousand dollars like that, and I'll keep doing it until I'm dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I care about this place, and I'm going to be buried up there on that hill, so I ain't going anywhere. So you better get used to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, Lynn, let's not Fair it. enough. <laughs> See you in the morning. I'm sorry, folks. See you in the morning. All right. <laughs> I wasn't going to get. You're fine. Well, no. You did fine. I didn't. No, I You're didn't. Fine. I what I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Right, Robin? That's right. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll meet with him and I'll make the list and I'll Thank you, Paul. Yep. yep. Thank you. There you go. I'll inspect <laughs> the truck. Make and sure you make sure you put me on the agenda for I will. next meeting. We will. Yeah. Would you prefer to be here right at the beginning? Whatever works for you. I'll come at whatever works for you. I don't okay. want to mess up your whole evening. Sorry. Whatever works for you. Okay. All right. How know. much time do you want? Quite a lot. Hour? That, that might be too much. Well, but don't ask me how much time I want. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, I'm just thinking that, you know. Tell me you'll give me half an hour and I'll take an hour. How's that? Well, that's sort of what happened tonight. <laughs> we'll work on that. <laughs> Your Peter will be there tomorrow, too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Greg Parker is on vacation. Right, right so we'll just, and I, I yeah. guess if they got to go look at that road, we'll have them go look at it, I guess. I don't, yeah. if Lynn wants to go over and we'll have them show them how to might, might push the water out of the... For Lynn to go with them. Yeah. I got another one on my list, that, that uh, head wall at the culvert by the Greenwood Lake on the county road. They, it's, there's a giant hole over there, which we're going to need to have them put some barricades or something there. Mm -hmm. Is it they the one that washed, washed out, out and they just got one bucket load of stone in there and someone's mm -hmm. going to go in there head first and kill themselves. Mm -hmm. So whether we fill it or I might run Lynn by just to see what he thinks we ought to do there because mm -hmm. the road's going to disappear mm -hmm. completely. It's right It's right into the travel part. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I went for a walk yesterday and I was like, ooh. Yeah. I don't know if it slid down or I don't know what happened. Right. Okay. Yeah. We're ready for the <sighs> Who's turn there? now? Oh, oh. oh okay, right. Are we going to be doing the town fuel bids? Do, do, do we get any bids in? One. You got one. What? What? Did you give them a deadline for submission? I did. Okay. Out, yep. Okay. I did when I sent out the email. Mm -hmm. Well, it's right on our bid, saying mm -hmm. the twenty fifth would be opening it. I would okay. be by the twenty second by twelve okay. p.m. All right. Well, at least we got one. Just out of curiosity, what you guys get for a propane bid this year? I haven't opened it. Oh. Have you got that today too, or is that different? No, that's different. Oh, no, that's it. That's the diesel we're locked in, well, we're not locked in. Right. We're going with We've been agreement. Agreement. Yeah. agreement with. Um, I had um, contacted Tracy from Borns. Mm -hmm. I sent her two emails, forwarded the bid, and to Conti. Mm -hmm. So those three is who mm -hmm. I sent it to. <laughs> and right now, since we haven't chose one, these are our prices that and this is propane. how it's varying propane and, uh, depending on quantity. Two. But because we're not locked in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're supposed to open that now. Well, we'll oh, it's, on, it's on our oh, yeah. I don't want to preempt here. Here we'll get this <coughs> So apologizing for the notebook from our lovely copier that's decided to croak on us. <laughs>
Uh, past two weeks, uh, deposits. We've lost a lot of money in the last two weeks. Well, you wrote all those checks to those people. What's that all about? It was another education <laughs> check. December 1st, that was due. Well, and yep, that there's two installments. There's one um, December 1st, and then that goes to the, it's still education tax. Mm -hmm. That one goes to the um, treasurer. Yep. yep. And then um, that's broken, split in two. So we're going to have to pay that amount again. Mm -hmm. June 1st, mm -hmm. um, school's all paid off. That was a painful day. That one's done. Yeah, that one's done. And um, so, yeah, then I um, refunded the um, parcels who their escrows um, didn't include their homesteads rebate. So I have to refund them. Uh, income. It's tiny. So, um, receiving the deposit from the hazard from the attorney, Field and Field, was the 5,000 uh, copies at cost, land records recording, land copies, and then vault fees. Did we get a payment for the municipal um, loan share permit for the grants and aid? From last fiscal year? Um, that one? That we fiscal were, year 18, yeah. Yes, we did. We did, great. We did. Okay. Yep. Um, delinquencies in the last two weeks. What page are we on? Oh, you don't have this. No. This is just yeah. my cheat sheet. Um, what does name look right? Posting batch. Was an error. Three deposits made. So I have to deduct this one. Two, twenty three, ten. Um, roughly thirty thousand of mm -hmm. incoming from from Ron for delinquencies. Mm -hmm. So that's rolling in. Good. Mm -hmm. Moving on to fuel. Okay, so um, drum roll please. So we have one bid from Gillespie, um, who is also providing off road diesel for us. Um, so, heating oil, let's see. Pre buy rate of 231 a gallon. Um, Did I give you that? That mm -hmm. copy of the, the fuel? Uh, I have it. I have okay. it. Yeah, you have it. Right. I'm notorious for losing papers. So you said the pre-buy? Pre-buy rate at 231 a gallon times 692 gallons. I guess that's figures <coughs> what you, you could probably make better sense of that of this than I can. But. Oh, that's oil. Okay. Yeah. So the oil. That's the heating fuel, right? Yes. Yeah. I was going to say that's a lot more than the propane was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't... I didn't give you a sample, but anyway. Um, the heating fuel is for this building. This building here and town garage. Town garage. Yeah. Two thirty-one. Um, I thought you were doing propane. Okay. No, I'm doing heating oil first. Um, so they're calculating that on six hundred and ninety-two gallons, which is probably what we have purchased at kind of a, a yearly average. Um, and then the budget rate of 236 a gallon, again with the 692 gallons, um, or a pricing plan rate of 228 per gallon. Um, what was the pre-buy? Pre-buy is 231. What, the, what is a pricing plan? I don't know what a pricing plan is. I would imagine. Um, I don't know what a person plan is, to be honest with you. I um, guess we'd have to ask them that. Do you have a sense of what they might be? The last three years we've done just the flat out pre buy. Pre buy, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the or two that thirty one. Yeah, two thirty three cents less. I just didn't know what that why yeah. why that was the case. I don't know yeah. what the 
I don't know whether a pricing plan allows for the fluctuation in their costs. Maybe it's a fixed payment every month. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. they have set up. Like I would that. think that the fixed payment, payment would be more than the pre-buy. You would think. That's well, why I would think the pre-buy would be the that. cheapest. Yeah. yeah, that's why I was a little confused by the. Price. Now the two, the, the two twenty-eight might be what they call a racked, a racked plus price. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, they're paying plus so much. Yeah, so it's, it's going to yeah. fluctuate all winter. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're guaranteeing no more than 228. Mm -hmm. But you're you're on the whims of chain, right? You don't know what it's right. Like, right. If they guarantee it's not more than 228, right. then it's a great deal. But right. if they're just saying that's what it would be today, today then it's not. I guess we could ask them what they mean by that. Because obviously yeah. that's the way you could go. If it, but I don't know what it means. That's what I. Right. If that's, a, if, I if that's the maximum we're going to pay. For, for, for what it's worth, when you're. I don't have to tell you, but when you're doing budgets, at least when you got a fixed, consistent right. price, you you're yep. a, you, there's no surprises. That's correct. Yep. That's what it is. It's a flexible budget plan where you make a payment monthly based on average of your previous usage and the current cash price. Yeah, it's you current. Ca it's, yeah, it's a that's current. So, so that's not, not a fixed deal. price. So we'll, right. you we'll might go. want to consider <coughs> scratching that. I think we'll scratch it off. I would go with the pre-buy. Pre-buy. Okay. Yep. And then for propane. Thank you. Um, the pre-buy rate is $1.34 a gallon based on uh, 3,000 gallons of usage. Budget rate is $1.39 per gallon based on 3,000 gallons of usage. And then the pricing plan is $1.22 per gallon. Um, what was the uh, pre-buy again? $1.44. Where else do you have propane be besides the town hall? Midrage. Garage. Oh, we have both. Yeah, all there. Oh, well, you guys don't do. There was some discussion before about the generator at the school. You guys didn't get into Whoa, that. Oh, the schools paying that still? I think. No, that's a, all no, the towns. Oh, well, so yeah, we get the same price for that. Then. Okay, yeah. so that's figured in there. Well, the that, um, because it's so we filled it. Last year, yeah. two years ago, two years, two years, years ago. How much it gets used so is the problem. Yeah. If it runs for three days, we burn it up, or it just sits there. No. no. Okay. Well, again, I think we go with the pre-buy again. Yeah. yeah. Those are good prices. Yeah, those are good prices, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a service plan proposal. <coughs> um, $85 per hour, um, town garage and the town office, plus parts. Yeah. And if that's on-site or from the time they leave there? Yeah, that's what. That's where they get yeah. you. It's from the time. It's mileage. from the time they leave right. to the time they, they get, get back. back. They get mileage both ways. Yeah. 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 So, so that's they, what you need to know. They're based in Northfield, so yeah, and that's an hour away, uh -huh. pretty much. Do we usually buy the service plan? Uh, or just I don't pay think the so. service. I I yeah. haven't. No, yeah. I haven't. Just call when it's broken. In the in the fall. Mm -hmm. The furnaces and then. Yep, that's the way we do it. Just clean mm -hmm. it in the fall and then. Right. All of it breaks. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a motion for Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we accept the budget price on both of those. So the dollar yeah. thirty-four for the propane, or not the budget, the uh, pre-buy pre rate. Mm -hmm. Probably dollar thirty-four on the propane and uh, two dollars thirty-one cents on the oil. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Be. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That was a good, easy button. Right. Thank you for taking care of that. And then, and then while you're here, um, during uh -huh. the, we had talked um, at the last meeting of trying to figure out the confusion around the HER fund, the capital fund for the yep. um, town highway equipment. Um, I know you were going to check with NEMRA. Okay. No, and you were going to check with Carter. I checked, didn't get checked with Carter, I checked okay. with East Montpelier. Okay. Okay. And yeah. they have a HERF, they have a variation of a HERF. It's still money set aside for, mm -hmm. in their plan, they've got money, so they've got a whole bunch of different things because they got more yeah. stuff than yeah, we got. Yeah, I do. Yeah. But it's the same idea. They call it a, just a capital fund mm -hmm. so they can buy different things. Yeah. Because but how do they incorporate that into the highway money? It's a, tr it's a simple transfer from, so when you receive your taxes in, our, our deposit into the HERF is an expense. On I get that, but how are you showing that that revenue is still there? It shows up a as a cushion. savings account. As a her funds is essentially a savings account. Mm -hmm. That's what it just shows up as like you have a, another savings account is how it shows up. They have to just call it a capital reserve of some okay. type. And that's what they right. so, told me. Right. So what I would do is name that. Right. So what we need to see that we budgeted say fifty thousand to go in the herf, and then there needs to be a cash transfer to that. And it shows up, it should be aside as a savings account. The HERF needs to be its own independent 
savings account. I think physically that money needs to be in a separate account. But when you when you establish your budget, when you carry mm -hmm. over your revenue, you have to show that revenue. I mean, we're not going to carry this revenue over because what's going to happen before June 30th is you make a transfer out of the whatever you got a money market or check. That's where that's where I'm having the issue. It's that when you you're not showing that that money is still in the highway. Well, what it's going to show is going to show money going out of the hurt out of the cap out of our whatever way you call it, our, our budget, highway, our highway into the HERF. It just, the, that's what it needs it. to say. It just says cash transfer to the HERF. And then it's going to show up in the HERF. So you just, in your ledger, it would just say cash transfer to the HERF. Right, but it's $50,000 or whatever in, it is. In the but that's the expense. That's not showing the carryover. You're not showing. You're not carrying it over because it's in a, it's in a, it's in a uh, account that the voters created. Right, but it's still money that the highway has. Right, but it's out of highway now. It's in that because if it was just highway, we could spend it on whatever we want. Mm -hmm. the no, only I way understand we, right. the rules, but that money should still show as... It won't. It's out of the highway fund. It's <laughs> out into the... I, know what she's, I think what you're saying is... How is it accountable? Am I... Is that no, what... what it, I know. I, we're, I understand what you're saying. It shows up just like when you transfer $100 from your checking to your savings. You still have it, but it's in the savings account. So it should show up as money in this HERF fund. It will show up as an expense from the highway budget into the HERF. That's yeah. my And opinion. I know I get the whole journal entry transferring the money, but, but it, showing that... You're not carrying it over because we put it into... The, the voters created that HERF. And that's is why it just for highway? It's just yeah. for highway but equipment. But it doesn't show in the highway. It won't show up. It's in a savings account that the voters created. Yes, I get that. For the specific purpose. I get that. But you are carrying the money, and that money is still highway money. In the HERF. Yes, but again, when you're creating the budget, that revenue of leftover money that's in the HERF is not showing in your highway anymore. That's and right. It's highway money, it's though. But it's, 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 it's in a her it's fund. Not, no, but my point is, it's 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 in an account that's only I, be able to be spent on highway I equipment. So it's I limited. We couldn't buy a copier with it, for example, without the voter approval. So the question is, why was it there to begin with? Because we want to save money for future purchases for only the highway. I didn't create this account. It's one the voters created a long time that's ago. That's where the payments were taken out of. Right. Right. And it's what it. But, but we're taken out of and not just transferred over, right? If you go over the last three years at BLCT, every time you go to a meeting, all the money that the highway spends needs to be shown in the highway. Right. Now, well, our payments are made out of the highway. They're not made out of the HERF fund, the highway. Yeah, but so we you can't, take that money that you want we to can't transfer. Side, we can't so carry no over. There's no transparency there. That's the other problem you have. There's no, no, no it, it is, because it's going to show, it's going to show a transfer, right and now then you'll see the money in this other account. That's what I'm trying to get you. Uh, well, uh, well, then when you get just you know, legally, we can't carry money over in our budget. The only, that, that's why hundred? that account was no, created, so you could money, save money toward a truck no purchase, for example. Okay, it doesn't sound like we, you know, we're still we're trying to solve this, and it's a savings so, account. Basically. Well, no, it's so what I'm trying to say is, in a, in a, in a yeah. proper ledger wise, it's going to show as money came in our checking account, and I transfer it to the highway fund in in the highway fund in our. Mm -hmm. you town want ledger, it's going to show is that fifty thousand now shows up in the savings. In the when you spend out of that, it's going to show up on the ledger over there. So the obvious question hasn't been asked of the treasurer's: What's the remedy? Yeah, what's the fix, Brandy? Well, that's what I'm trying to get is every other town around us has these funds yeah. and does it. And like in the in last week's gazette, um, under the uh, with the Callis, uh, it mentions that the Cal the town of Callis took the surplus in the highway budget. Put it into and the put herf. it into a capital fund, her right. fund. Or her fund. And, and these and capital they, funds they, are they, created they, by the voters. So when they create the town report, that money should show in the highway still. It shouldn't show in in outside of the highway. Right. That's was, what I'm getting at. Everything was budgeted in the highway, and then this was a surplus at the end of the I year. I get that, and that's how it used to be done. Mm -hmm. But now, everything is it's it's not supposed to be sent outside of the highway. That's not but, making but it transparent. What I'm trying to tell you is the money. voters, this was a that. voter that created this, not the select board. No, I get that. So it's the transparency is the voters created this account and it's 
for payments to be for only equipment payments yes but now we make the payments out of the highway well, we shouldn't be doing that that's yes. what's improper <laughs> Okay, so That's I will what? have somebody. I will have somebody from BLC. Okay, because you got me confused because I, I asked how they physically did it, and that's That'd what be they great told me. Somebody come up. Wherever, I whoever. All I'm going to tell you is it's got to be doable because every town around us is doing, doing it. it. Right. So what you're saying is, if I what I'm hearing is you've got this excess money that hasn't been spent. You, you know, we're actually going to budget spent. money to say. Let's just say I'm going to save fifty thousand towards the purchase of the next truck. We can't carry that money over in our budget. It has to go it somewhere. Be. And but it's it, illegal for us to do that. So that's why the voters created this HERF fund whenever they did it. I don't know when it happened. The HERF fund was created so payments were made out of that fund. No, it's there. You can't you can no, leave the fifty K in our highway fund to carry over. We can't do that. So the argument the taxpayers can say we got that extra fifty thousand that should come back. No, because the voters created the account for the purpose of buying highway equipment. They voters can get rid of that account if they don't want to have it, but then we have no means to save money toward the next purchase of a piece of equipment. That's well, what it was for. you just it can't be transferred out to make a payment. We can, only for highway equipment. It doesn't come out of the, it doesn't come out of the hurt for payments. It shows in the highway fund. I will have that's somebody it, from the LCT. You, probably, that's yeah. what should be happening. On it's an accounting issue, obviously. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just in the towns around us. I, I just, if, if December 9th is our for us to get rid of it, the voters would have to get rid of it. If we decided to buy something else besides highway equipment, you'd have to have the voters Special approve hole. it. Right. Otherwise, we can spend that money on the next town plow truck, for example. The whole thing about putting it into the highway fund mm -hmm. of the payments <clears throat> is to make it so that it's transparent that this is the money that's, that's being sent out of the highway. Right. right. And just like the general fund, we don't show carryover, but the money's there. You, it's illegal for us to carry money over. Mm -hmm. But we do every year. Right. The last it, two years. But we shouldn't be. If we're budgeting a carryover, that's illegal. Yeah, you can't there budget should a carryover. There be a cushion right. of minimum 3% to be carried you over can't. in case of emergencies. Yes, there is. I thought it, it doesn't show on the, like the library, got the, the um, owner angel money. We show that money for transparency so the town knows that that money is still revenue for us and we're being transparent about it. So that but what you're saying is a 3% yep. is above and beyond what you estimate your cost to yes, be in case as of a emergency. small insurance policy. It's a policy. standard. Yes. Is it legal though? Yes, I will bring. Okay, that's just my question. I, I, so then anything over 3% should be given back to the taxpayers? Yes. We should not be having a surplus. That's all I'm saying. That's Up why these the capital funds two are created. Years of emergency of, of certain areas, whether it be attorney fees or um, overtime hours, uh, upcoming ballot clerks, anything that was extra money mm -hmm. has cut into a typical cushion of 120000 that we typically carry forward every year. I've never had to go out for a line of credit. Right. And, and, and it, yeah. until theoretically, should be reducing our need for taxes on the next budget if that's what we're doing, right? I mean, but that cushion makes it so that I don't have to go out for a line of credit. Right? Well, I understand yeah. that. And and also in transparency, when you're doing the budget, when you have that three percent, I know the time is flying. And I haven't you done have, the budget yet, so I don't know the answer. When you have that three percent somewhere in that town report, that ought to that ought to be transparent. What's well. And it's never been. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's never been. But, but you see from, I'm going up until the it. last two years of getting hit with expenses, overspending, right. we have cut into that cushion where I had to go for a line of credit this year. But, yeah. And I think if it's explained to the taxpayers right. that here's the 3% right. and here's the purpose yeah. of it, and it's going to be cheaper for you to do this than going out to get a line of credit. I think I, I don't think you'd have any problem getting it through. No, but I, I was think just for, trying to yeah. use that as an example of why they create these special savings funds, whatever you call them so that you have a legal way to save money because you can't just leave it in your checking account yeah. for, for right. you know, two years. And what the town would like to do, or at least what the select board would like to do, is to create a, a basically a savings account. Which so they that, did in the past. It's already been done. Right. So emergency that, fund. The hurt, no, not an emergency so that we can put money away so that when we buy a piece of equipment we have the money to pay for it outright, so we right. aren't paying interest on right. it for... You're talking like the fire department. Does. Yeah, and this yeah. is what the HERF was yeah, created this for. Is, uh, this is what other towns right. do. They're help. setting the money aside, so instead you just write a check or most of a check and you might have to borrow a little bit. But yeah. 
th that's all we're trying to do. And I think we're on the same page. Just to me, it's how it's you just account, how to get there, how to account for it. Because I, I, how to account for it. I thought I had it resolved, but apparently not. So I'm not trying to argue with you. I just, <laughs> I had it set in my head, and I still do. But we don't agree, and that's okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> it's got to be a way to do it. Is all so I'm saying. December 9th? December. Uh, December 9th is the uh, next slide for that. Let me get up here. In in the Gazette this week. Town of Palace had a surplus in their highway department. Mm -hmm. and they you put can't it, carry it over. And they put it into a capital fund, mm -hmm. and and it said that this was from a town meeting vote. Right. Um, so what the, what they discussed on the town meeting to to have that be a process for the select board to do, um, I don't know, but we could ask someone from Palace how they set that up. Um, and they Does that have to be voted on every year? No. I don't know. See, the thing is, you're not going to see, you're going to be a year behind. Because you're not going to know if we have any revenue on town meeting. You're going to well, be right. a year behind. Un unless we, unless like if we, we wrote budget. in our budget, it says we're going to collect taxes on 50000 that we plan to transfer to the HERF. See, the thing, That's what we're talking right, about doing. And that would show up as when people vote on the budget, they're voting to prove that. The thinking is is to establish a certain amount. And in the old I don't know what the amount is, fund yeah. tables, it was 90000 was. Ninety thousand dollars a year would be designated to the her fund. So for this accounting, if we have that in the highway budget, that we have ninety thousand dollars that goes towards, uh, let's say, highway equipment, and then we spend, you know, we'll, we'll spend the. We have two truck payments right now that we're made, or a truck payment and, and a loader a, payment, a bucket loader payment. So. You know, and that's not going to come to ninety thousand dollars. So there'll be that money left over, and then if, if so at the up. end of the year, um, end of the fiscal year, that money that's sitting there would get. The thinking was to take that money, that surplus from the what we had budgeted, and put it into the HER fund, the capital fund for to the, save it, to yeah. save it. So and that will build up over a few years, um, and then when we do go to buy a new. A uh, piece of equipment. If we're really lucky, we would have all the money that we need to pay, pay for it for outright it. and not have to take out a loan. Mm -hmm. So we aren't paying the interest. That's what Hardwick does. Now. Right. They just buy their stuff outright. Because um, the interest that we're paying is tens of thousands. Right? Yeah, it's a lot of money. The same so thing. you take your your hearth fund. Do you put that in like CDs so that earns you money as well? It's in, it's a spe has its, it's own nice special yes. account. Yeah. It's getting three percent. Right. Yeah, so it's doing good. And yeah. That's yeah. The it's good. Rate. It's a smart way to do it. Right. For a bank, that's good. It is yeah. good. Yeah. So it is. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get there. I know. I mean, <laughs> girl, we'll have to arm wrestle for it. Not. Right. I'll use my left. <laughs> She's pretty rugged. I, I know. She kicked my rear end. It's fine. <laughs> so, I mean. Uh, like Paul says, other towns are doing this. There has to be a way to has do to be it. a way to do it legally. Well, that right? was the whole thing of going to these seminars is oh, this is what they want you to revert to do. They mm -hmm. want everything shown in and out of the highway route. Yes. Yeah, we've had that. Well, we'll get there. But we have we've been around the barn already. So if we budget it in the highway department, at highway fund, highway department would be budget. And then we that money is left over at the end of the year, and we're we were, and we're sort of we sort of know because we know how much we're going to be making in payments on whatever equipment right. we're paying for. Right. We'll know how much, and hopefully we would just kind of try to keep that rather than spending it on other right. things, so that it could go at the end of the fiscal year. We can plunk it into the our Perfect. savings account, which we call the HERF fund. Do you guys get yourself in a corner load if you've taken that and you put it there, now it's, it's earmarked it specifically. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can't because spend if you, it. That's what it's for. Yeah. Yeah. You, so you can't use it for old no. and gravel or anything like that? No. no. It's earmarked that for that. Right, because that. yeah. that's the specific voter approved yeah. purpose. And we have, we have several other funds. We have a paving fund, we have yeah. a yeah. school fund, There's we have 15. a right. you know, yeah. building fund. There's lots of different funds that we have. It's the only legal way we can save money. Yep. Is the voters have to create. So you're able, you are able to project with that money that you want to put in the HERF fund. Yeah, you've yes. got you've got some good numbers saying that. Look, we're not going to be short on this account. We're on working on that to get those solid numbers. That's okay. Obviously, there's some controversy over the new dump trucks thing, which yeah. makes the numbers. Right. Yeah, that, that's Make, a big that's a big number. Yeah, I gotta. I don't. I first I heard that story, so I have to yeah. have to think about that. Yeah, but a lot of things could be coming down that could change the picture. What the picture looks like. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, well, Remember, it was easy. Everybody would do can, it. I don't know if I'm asking you to go out of order. Can, can we deal with the uh, Woodbury store project at this point? 
that's kind of next because the yep. town clerk is up. We have a little bit of town clerk business and then we're going to get into that. We're going to have some cake and paste lap or something next. <laughs> so, Diana, we're ready for the town clerk. I'm really mad. Yeah. You could have come in earlier because we used up all your time. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to blame Lynn. He's not here anymore. Yeah. Lynn and Chuck. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 Okay. always adds in the the uh, times are are a guess basically. Well, they are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. That's what hers always said at the bottom yeah. is once it's past seven, then it's it. Or anything can happen. Last time you at the last meeting you asked about how what the average number, what the number of permits were issued every year, and I threw out. I thought it was thirty, but it's actually. I thought it was forty, but it's actually more like thirty. Mm -hmm. We do have a list every year. Um, of the permits so averaging issue. 30 permits a year, mm -hmm. seven year average. Yeah, okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. So, we're thinking about buying a copier because our copier we baby did along for many years and it's, it's got just not going to do it any good. Yeah, it's done. So uh, we contacted three companies, like uh, according to the purchasing policy, uh, if it's less than eight thousand dollars, we just have to go out and make sure we get the best price. So we're looking at these three. Uh, obviously, the top one and the bottom one, the Canon and the McGee Office products, are very close. Mm -hmm. I think the service contract from the Canon is a little cheaper because it's not a fixed price. It's based on less than a penny a page depending on how many pages we we go do approximately 20,000 pages a year although that's hard to believe we can do that many. <laughs> it's a goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what is your recommendation having to use well, it? You guys know, use I, it. Everybody weigh in. I uh, have just today sent out an email to the town clerk's list saying, you know, anybody have any particular issues with any of these suppliers or do you love your copy or any so what kind do you have? They're pretty, I mean, these, these vendors all have lots of municipal and school clients. So they know what we need, and we specify that we don't need color, we don't need a fax, we don't need any fancy sorting options, we don't need wireless. Skip Marcassani <coughs> recommended that hardwired is recommended, and we can do that. Another way to in your system. So, you know. so you don't need color? No. No? Okay. We don't need color. So we, if we buy I mean, If we had color, it's just a problem, you know, with the ink is so expensive. Mm -hmm. People are going to come in and want to make copies, and yeah, it's, you know, it's so. Do you need a service contract? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if we choose one of the other of these, the total that you'll have to budget for is going to be approximately a thousand dollars a year. A year. Mm -hmm. For uh, for the sixty-five dollars a month yeah. plus. Uh, and Skip Marcassani happened to be here on the day we were interviewing the uh, Canon rep, and he recommended that. Um, because of the way technology is changing, he recommended that we go with a lease rather than a purchase. To lease the copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because in five it? years, you know, things could be changed. I mean, these are a lot cheaper. The, the, these machines retail for between seven and eight thousand dollars. You so know what a copy already, your lease is? How much, much he leases? Yeah, it says right here. Oh, like 60 mm -hmm. monthly. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Right so, that second number under the 60 month lease is basically the total payments we'd be making. Uh, Do you have any preference on the three? We haven't really decided on that. Mm -hmm. They're pretty close. I mean, one, if it's not lower in. in um, so it's like seven, eight hundred dollars a year to lease it compared to purchase it. Yes. Because that includes service. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the service I asked him, I put in like when I came up with that thousand dollars, I put in maybe a two hundred dollar service contract. So it's cheaper to lease the thing. And that includes ink and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh really? So which one do you want? 
Huh. We haven't really decided. Okay. I did uh, which one was going to bring me chocolate. Which one is that one? Do <laughs> you need a copy? I just don't get it covered. Do you need it? Or you think yeah. I should wait two more weeks? No, I don't uh, think no. you need okay. to wait. You just need to tell us that we can choose one of those two. One of the two. Well, so the McGee's the cheapest. Will that work for you? No. Well, like I or said. You want to go in the middle of the road with the cannon. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. You guys need well, to use it. Well, the cannon is, is cheaper because of uh, the service, service contract. contract. Right, I'm yeah. talking about leasing it. You wouldn't pay a service contract, would you? Yes. Oh, you do? No, you okay. still do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, canon it is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> got to know me. When you need Four something, eights. I figure tell what you need. Yeah. And we'll... yeah. Well, Randy, you want to do that? or Cannon? And I like the guy from McGee. I thought he was, you know, a good salesperson. But mm -hmm. the Cannon guy was a good salesperson, too. So. Mm -hmm. I think they're pretty, like I said, I think options are pretty standard. Well, if, if you and Brandy can come to an agreement, then we will. Are you both okay that. with Canon? Well, okay, yeah. If right. you're not, say so, please. It's 342933. Well, the McGee is a little cheaper, but with the service contract, it's a little more. So we're talking a difference of yes. 50 bucks. Yes, here. a few dollars. Right. Yeah. I'd like to go over the, the details again. I've been a little busy lately. So you prefer we waited until the next meeting? No, I prefer you just tell us to choose one of those. Okay. Okay. Make a motion, Paul. Which I'll one? make a motion to buy the can and copy it. No, that's not what I asked. <laughs> you want to okay, sound like it? <laughs> no, as I said, I want you to tell us to go ahead and buy one. Choose one of these. Oh, you want us to yeah. tell you? You want yeah. to? Yeah, I don't want you to choose. I want oh, you okay. to give us the authority to choose. Can we do that? Of course you can. Yeah. Okay, so I will make the motion. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. <laughs> so I'll make the motion that they would uh, that we do authorize the folks here that work at the town offices to choose the copier with a budget not to exceed $66 a month <laughs> and or maximum out at what's the $240 a year for the service plan. That would cover both choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it gives you the choice between two. And you guys right. can fight it out, and I won't be right. in the middle of it. Right. I'm willing to be the bad guy, though, so. <laughs> so, all in favor? Aye. 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 Was that clear enough? That's good. That's clear. I'm sure Laura got all that. Yes. Yeah, that's why I asked her. I said, I was confused, so. Okay. Yeah. So, on to the more interesting stuff. We had our closing. Finally. We still have a few details to work out <clears throat> with regards to the removal of material from the building. Um, the removal said he material. Needed, well, the skirt said he, we gave him the weekend. We had the closing. Yeah. Saturday morning they signed the papers. We have the lease. We own the building. Deal. But he but we told him he could have the weekend to take out whatever he needed. Well, I guess he found some other stuff and he wants another weekend. So I'm just going to deal with the... I I'm know, not in favor of waiting many more yeah, I just, um, Whenever right, the well, contractor can start, just have them start. Yeah. The, con the main contractor said that he is um, not going to start till next week. Okay, that's fine. To, to me, I agree with Brian. It's like, if he doesn't, so if the, the guy needs to start the other, tomorrow... I'm waiting to hear from the, uh, solid, the, from the uh, hazardous waste guy. They have to first go in and pick out all these various little things that were noted in one of the studies, you know, mm -hmm. like a can of paint here and there, mm -hmm. fluorescent light ballast, sure, yes. and little things like that that shouldn't, uh, you know, one of the things Kirk wants to get is this c compressor in the door from the cooler. I don't know what good they are anymore. Better hurry. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, you, you better hurry, because we're yeah, starting. Time is... Mm -hmm. Old he's one. had lots of time. Yeah, right. He's dragged yeah, this well, far enough. Yeah. The opposite, but so anyways. how long has it been since this contractor has been in that building? Oh, probably... When did we have that meeting? A month street? ago? Yeah, maybe a little longer. But oh, okay. Yeah. I was just wondering if it had yeah. Changed. dilapidated enough so it's unsafe it for anybody to be in there at this point. We're so far down the road. Let's pull it. Get it done. It is unsafe for Kirk to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm not in favor of waiting much longer. Right, so he's dragged it out. Right, way too he long can't. Yep. Your guy needs to start Monday and he hasn't done it, then mm -hmm. too bad. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. 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 yeah, we should definitely give it that. Okay. Yeah. So we should probably the just, the just the tell him that the, can start the, the contract is going to start on Monday, is. December 2nd. And well, so he has yeah, that's what so I'm that's the day. for now. I'm just worried about whether any contractor wants to start anything this week. The main well, guy. Well, I just want to have them start well, tomorrow if they can. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as they can yeah, start. Anywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say if they can start any time this week, let them go for yeah. it. Because he's had plenty. He had six years. And come talk to me. Place out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, you know. Yeah, we don't know. Good thing you know. I know. We all know. <laughs> and he's Michael still dragging little, it out. <laughs> Michael got a little taste of it at the closing. Oh, he did, huh? <laughs> he was like catatonic at the end. He's very quiet. Did <laughs> <laughs> he talk a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had this experience before. Yeah. Well, I, have been there. I have too. I've been there, yeah, my friend. Sure. Oh, you yeah, see yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. You did that years ago. Oh, yes. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Yeah. So I, I also wanted to mention. I wanted to apologize for something I said last at the last meeting. I was, I was um, uh, shocked that you agreed to pay the zoning administrator twenty five hundred dollars for a job that I did for many many years for a thousand dollars, and then. This board, I didn't realize you guys were here, but you made poor Jennifer grovel to get a couple hundred dollars mm -hmm. for all that court time. Paul and, and I were I wasn't that, here. That doesn't matter. It's the board. It's the same board. <laughs> right? It's that we board. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I just, it, it, so, so that's when I came in and I said. And I, by the way, would have disagreed with that decision to not pay someone to go to court. Just so you know. Okay, good. Well, you got to pay. If you want good people, <laughs> you want them to do the job, you got to pay them yeah, to do well, it. That's other, the way life yeah. is. So anyways, um, at the time I said I thought I should get a bonus for all this extra work, but I don't mean that. I wouldn't accept it, and it's a job that I've taken on because I wanted to have it done. And, and you've done a good job, and it's appreciated. It'll be my reward to be see the damn thing done. It's your legacy. <laughs> and I mean that uh, sincerely. Like you put a lot of effort into this, and I know how much time this stuff takes, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Not everybody agrees okay. what was done and what was... But that, it is what it is. <laughs> Six yeah. years. Plus. I think people yeah. five. It's going to be over with soon. Uh, five. When, when did you have that other plan that started all this? It would have been 2015. Yeah. We started in 2014. Yeah. Well, the, the, the meeting. It would have been 2014. Town meeting, yeah. Yeah. So it was about. It was yeah. the fall of. Fall of 2014. Five years ago. Yeah. So that's when. So the obvious question now is, from listening to you, you have closed and the town, closed. The town as of this past Saturday, owns, owns the store. Right. So the, now the question is, does the select board plan on going to the townspeople and asking for any additional funds dealing with the store? I don't think we're going to no, no, I'm, I'm asking the select board. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Honestly. Uh, there's no plan to do that. We're, okay. We have no. bid already and we've no. accepted the contractor and he's got to The contractor has board. asked for a 5% increase mm -hmm. just because he's had to wait so long and he's going to have to do the work in the winter now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But the amount, if I can say this, the amount of money that the town has appropriated already, which is $44,000, should be enough for our 25% match because the total okay. scope of the project has been reduced. So we shouldn't need more so money. So FEMA's not giving okay. us so there's as the much answer. money as they had. I just honestly didn't know the answer to your question or what yeah. the answer There we are. But I would agree with Paul. You know, the day that the contractor says he can he get can here, start, yeah. Wednesday, yeah. then just start. We've had yeah. too much. We have just so. you worked yeah. so hard on this, and people have had all the hand wringing and mm -hmm. talk. I'm ready to just have it be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pull the mandate off. Okay, and then I'd like another week in December if I could to get my work caught up. <laughs> we can well, add that to the calendar if you can get it on there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And before you know it, it'll be down report time. And mm -hmm. oh, I did have a couple comments for you guys to keep in mind for your budget. Um, I'd like to. I hope you would. Maybe you were always going to say this. Put in some money to paint the town hall. I think it needs it. How long ago was it done? It like, looks pretty crappy. When I, when I, 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 yeah, it does need to be painted. Five? It does need to be. Do you have any idea how much it'll cost? No. I was going to ask Mike King for an estimate. I think, yeah. what, I think what we need to start doing is, um, you know, we've been taking money from the building fund that had a chunk of money in it, mm -hmm. another savings. We need to set some money aside. We need to start setting aside money for the building fund because we've mm -hmm. been taking, 
However, I don't know how that fund got established, where that money came from. So it was sort of for it was sort of for you know emergencies rather than a, you know if something came up in the middle of the year and we needed a new furnace or something like that. Right, I mean, yeah. and that's fine, but we have been using it to for maintenance of the both the town office and yeah. the town hall. Only like um, so we need to, to when we're doing the budget, we should start. You know, just uh, it doesn't have to be a lot. No, I mean, it could be a few thousand. Who painted okay, this building the last time? I can't remember the what? name of the. Who painted okay, this building the last time? This building. Oh. We could find Bruce? that out, but I'm not sure. Yeah. This building? No. Yeah. I thought they did it like a couple, three years ago. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. No, just, just that, that end yeah. of it was done a couple of years ago. Um. Because Dial was complaining about it all the time. We painted but the, the roof. Hasn't been done the, for roof a long time. the roof was. Painted. The roof was done. Yeah. Oh, maybe the roof is what I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah. I got just one last thing that, I, that I'm going to leave you because okay. now that the town owns that store, I would strongly suggest that because of the potential liability involved, you wouldn't let anybody go in there, whether it be Kirk or anybody else at this point, because of the situation idea. that's in. Mm -hmm. Or else have him sign a waiver or something. It's right. Just, yeah. yeah. Maybe a waiver there, yeah, I agree with you on that. If he goes in and falls down, yeah, he's going to sue us. No, we're going to be supporting him again. Yeah. yeah, that's an excellent idea. I think I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say. I would just say not even a waiver. I would just say why you know because now you're going to have to have an attorney draw a drop a waiver or something for you. I would just say, forget it. Well, you can deal with him then. <laughs> well, I don't have to. <laughs> have him call one of us. Well, we, but somebody else does. That's the issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, we can have the contractor take the stuff out he wants. Because they got to wreck it out anyway. Yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah. I can't imagine there's anything in there of any value just from looking at well, the Well, he says there's a lot of roofing, but I don't know where it is. Roofing material, whether it's something. I just want this be, over with. Because yeah. he, he used to have some windows. Yeah, he took his windows out. This is like the never they've been to seven years. He could have been taking his stuff out. Yeah, it was. He took for a couple of weeks or something. Seems like there might have been some stuff in the barn. It's like having a seed stuck in your gum. I didn't see anything in the store when I get in there. Nothing left on this end of it. It's all in the basement. He can just sign a simple one sentence statement that doesn't take a lawyer. I bet VLCT yeah. has some kind of... We don't need VLCT. Right, but I bet they have some kind of form that... Yeah. Just Is it insured on. under the town property now? Probably. Mm -hmm. We should probably find <laughs> that out. Yeah, we we could should probably it. find that out tomorrow because at least if someone gets hurt on the property, we need to have insurance for it. That's a good idea. Okay. Probably better but get it on there tomorrow. Yeah. Because yeah. anyone on, yeah. falling in the hole over there, we're liable now. We should probably do that. Do we need a vote for that? No, yeah. okay. Do just do it. Thank you. Make sure it has insurance tomorrow. Yeah. That will solve part of that problem too. Mm -hmm. if someone does go in there. Thank you. All right. She was well. Have a good night. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Thank you for the work on it. Yes. Okay. The same thing. Whenever the contractor can get there. Just pull the chain. Have it done. Pull it Kirk gets mad. Tell him I'm available to be yelled at. All righty. <laughs> Yeah. I can take Lynn right here. That's good. You can do Lynn, you can do anybody. Throw them in a truck together. It's fine. And yell at each other. You can even get spittle. When spittle starts coming, you know you really got something worked up. That's the worst of it, is it just keeps coming. It keeps keeps going. no end to it. Yeah. yeah, no end to it. Yeah. So, All right. Uh, uh, so the Woodbury Stormwater Master Plan grant a, a letter of support. Um, I just want to say for myself, um, I'm having second thoughts on these different, these four projects in the village that um, you know, we have received a grant for full design for two of them, except it's been held up uh, because of the Department of um, Environmental Conservation's can't seem to put together a contract for that. Yeah. So what are your reservations? Well. Um, you know, I'm just thinking that maybe it's um, these things are too expensive and too fancy for what's really going to be needed. Um, for, what it, for, the, for, the, for what it's going to do for so that. This is the concern. Yeah. We, we talked about yeah. this. Yeah. We, we met with Alan May about another, uh, with, yeah. the, uh, with the Valley Lake Road. For, we're thinking of get, 
getting a better roads grant to try to fix up all of that erosion problem. And you know, we just mentioned these uh, catch basins. Yeah. To, um, yeah, we talked about those. And yeah, it just seemed like a nightmare. Like at the end of where the fire station is, the tree died. We cut it down. If I can get the guys with the loader sometime, we move the wood. Or we'll get rid of it somehow. But we can dig that and smooth it, make it easier to plow, and just put a stone catch base in there. Right. And the same thing over behind the annex. Yeah, simple. Um, on our, simple. it ended up on your land. Let's so on this building, really we have like to get over there. there. Right. It's got yep. a stone you know, behind our annex stuff. building. Yeah, that we wouldn't have to yeah, buy this expensive like, structure. That right. And that's just a, right. such an expense for what no, it's going to be. No, that tree that you took down, is that burnt? Like in a wood stove? Yeah, it's dry as a bone. It's not very good wood, but if somebody wants it, just take it. It's all cut up. Okay. I tried to give it away to someone else, but it's not really good wood. It's but good campfire. Yeah, or if you're desperate for, for firewood, it would burn tomorrow and it would yeah. keep you warm for a few days. Huh. Just, it's just take it. it. No, I was thinking about Gwen up on... Um, oh, Gwen Marsha? Yeah, because I don't know. Because a couple people oh, yeah. that, I, that were wanting wood, I said, go ahead and take it. And it would burn fast. Um, it would be a lot of... It's it dry, dry. The labor of getting it, and, yeah, unless there's a lot of it. Well, that's enough to keep you warm a couple days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's anything she's interested she in. She wants it, just tell her to come take it. Yeah. The tree was pushing on where the stump was coming. On the sides of our roads, you know, when the road crew are out, have a stump dump type of thing mm -hmm. where they bring it, throw it, yeah. and maybe people could go that needed it for. Well, the key, if we start cutting wood, it'll be a lot of, there's a lot of wood. Or yeah. throw chunks of it, but yeah. yeah. There's lots and lots of wood. Lots of wood so around there, just. I think we're kind of all thinking the same way about this, and it's, um, I mean, yeah, because my concern with that structure, like what I saw in East Montpelier, is the annual maintenance of it. Right. Where stone, we can easily maintain that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like a, too much of a solution, I mm -hmm. guess is the word I would yeah, use. Kind of yeah, you thinking. know, since, since the watching the village with the flooding in May, yeah. I just think... Because it could those, fill right up in one flood and... If yeah. those things were in place, you know, they would just be totally... Wrecked and we'd have right. to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Because it would have wrecked it like twice this year. Anyway, Think about, about it. Right. For such a yeah. Because enough material came down through, those would have filled right up, and we'd be cleaning they, them twice in one year. They would have been full. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I know that. Uh, well, you know, they, they the regional planning commission has put a lot of work into these. Grants, yes, I know. But um, hopefully they'll understand. Because we're all trying to think of exactly what Lynn was talking about is. Not right. creating so much maintenance for our people that we can't do it. You know, we're going to start right. putting people on to maintain all this stuff. Yeah. Or hire outside entities. Right. Somebody's got to do it because if it's worthless without being maintained. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think I, we don't really even need to make a no. motion on that. I'll, I'll make a call tomorrow or, or Wednesday and, and uh, explain our thinking. And, um, so on to the town highway uh, report. Um, Buck Lake Brook, I, you know, I we we I sent I talked to Shauna Clifford t the morning after our last select like, board meeting and, and mentioned the change in the order um, for the contract that we had and Ronnie's and Ronnie's concerns. concerns. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, so I spoke to Shauna about it, um, and she contacted um, Jaron Borg also, who was the other person that came. He's okay, the yeah. um, he's the water guy. Yeah. Um, and Shauna mentioned, well, you know, we're pretty busy right now. Um, if I don't get to this, she was had agreed to uh, write, um, you know, not so much a change of order, but just the reasoning behind their changing from you know using the larger stone to the cement blocks. Yeah. Because um, you know, well, they're fixing it now. It's right. Well, because my like concern this. with this is from my construction side is this is a change in materials, right? Which should have had a written. Yep. Change a means and methods, you know, we're going to drive this way instead of that way, or we're going to put it down with a crane instead of a backhoe. Yep. That's a means and method, but the with material change, mm -hmm. we should get a written change order. Yeah. So yep. it was changed by this, but my fear is then that uh, who ends up being responsible for right. it. Right. Um, so she, she said she would do that. She still hasn't done that. She asked me, you know, because it was a phone conversation, if I didn't see it by the end of last week to send her. A reminder, um, which I did, um, and I cc Jaron Borg on that. Um, so Jaron Borg did respond, and so far Shana um, has. You know, she sent me a couple of emails again, just saying that she'll get to it as soon as she can. Um, so um, Jaron Borg had proposed a couple of dates to try to come um, to come 
to so the which village. I didn't respond yet. Right? Yeah. What were the two dates? Well, he had the second and the fourth. One is Monday, um, and then the fourth is a Wednesday of next week. Um, Shauna hasn't confirmed that she could come then. Um, okay. I could so, make something work at this right. point if and I knew. So I responded to them um, that I could meet uh, on the second in the afternoon. I and could do that. The fourth is a full work day for me in Burlington, so I wouldn't be able. But I and I also mentioned that I don't have to be there. It's, they're basically coming so that Ron can express yeah, his yeah, concerns yeah, to sure. them. And then we want to see that just change order in there because that would spell right. out. Right. Oh, so they still can add the change order to it. Well, um, we need to document that in the construction world, what should have happened is the change order should have been produced, and then we should have reviewed it, right. and then it would have been executed. But probably that didn't happen. Right. So what, I mean, what Shauna was saying is that she could write an explanation of why they changed the, the plan um, yeah. and that that would, because it's a V-Trans grant, she's, yeah. you know, she's a V-Trans director, yeah. so I think that would qualify right. us. Well, and the problem is who's the agent here? I mean, they're really the ones that approved it, they paid right. for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, our, we're still going to have the ire if there's a problem coming on us. Right. Yeah. We're paying a small percentage of this. Yeah, and which I think puts us in a tough position. And I think you know what we expressed to Ron last time was that the town would write a letter stating that the town would be responsible for any cleaning out the brook behind the building. Cleaning out the brook if, if that stuff. Right. That kind of makes sense. I've got no problem doing that. And we'd have right. to do that in writing because I think that yeah. was his concern. And I do share his concern. If it was ten years from now, all of us faces yeah. probably will be, be gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he might be gone too. Right. So. Um, yeah, so that was the resolution. I think I think if we have that from Shauna. I think um, we're maybe just two living in a different location. <laughs> I don't know, it might not be. <laughs> no guarantees is what I've been told in this well, life. <laughs> you never know. No yeah, guarantees. You never know. So um well, that is guaranteed at some point in time. Right. So. so and I could read what Jaron's response to the change why they did that, if you would like. I think I did send I read it, yeah, I read that. Yeah. So yeah, um, I just wish they handled it a little differently, but I understand why right. they did it that way. Right. It's just, mm -hmm. it puts us in a tough spot because we're having to sign off and say, yeah, it's good, and right. we didn't really get to weigh in because I would have said, don't do it. But <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, Shauna did share that with me the morning yeah. after the I'm not blaming you for it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just yeah. it puts us, again, we're in a bad position over it. Yeah. And we, it's not yeah, a... We're taking, you know... She's the expert. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're not. Yeah. They're yeah. kind of the agent here yeah. for us. Yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah. We. That's what we look for. And that's what the guys. contractor right. does. The guy that yeah. did the work. That's, yeah. You know, that's that's their does. business. So, yeah. Because Ronnie's really big as far as cleaning the brook, and then also it's a waste of money to have to pay to do it again, which I guess we're stuck with the problem. Well, so, if it washes away. If it washes, yeah. I hope it doesn't. But mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully in the spring we're out here and I mean, we can go up and check it out. From, see. from, from what they <laughs> have said, you know, not using the cement blocks and using the larger stone was a, a better solution to the problem. That may be so, true. I hope they're right. Yeah, I hope they're right. I mean, and they're the ones that are supposed to know that. This goes back to I don't really know. So I guess if it's right. washing the smaller stone down to in some major event, it's better than washing the big blocks down. Yeah, unless so, it all comes down. Or have the right. bank come down. Or have the bank come down. <coughs> yeah. so, okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, so Valley Lake Road, Fire Department Annex update. Uh, we um, met with Alan May, and by we, um, Paul and I were there, Greg Roy, Parkhurst Roy. was there, Roy DeMars was there, mm -hmm. and I guess that was it. That was it, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, we're basically, we invited Alan May to come. He is the person who oversees the Better Roads grants. Which, um, the thought was to have work done on the road um, to solve any of the water flowage erosion issues um, prior to um, paving it. Yeah. Um, so, so it's in the spring, obviously. Yeah. So this this grant it's due December thirteenth, um, and uh, you know, are they going to design it for us? Well, one of the thoughts we had was um, to have um, Pike, who has come, this fellow Norm Patton. So I'll call Norman and set yeah. something up. It won't be this week. But no, and this with Thanksgiving week. They can do some work. design work for well, us. Well, we're hoping that they might be willing to. And they could, you know, charge us. It could be part of the grant, I think. Or, yeah. or if not, we'd have to hire an engineer yeah. to look at yeah. it. I don't think it'll be terribly costly. No. Yeah. So but it affects so many properties. I think it makes sense to have a road profile drawn. Yeah. So that be we, everybody to, can review it. To have somebody who really, you know, a civil <clears throat> engineer with designing 
skills. Yeah. And we'd have a plan so that Ronnie, because we're going to be affecting Ronnie's driveway, we're going to be affecting our driveway, we're affecting the school driveway, right. we're affecting by the old store, you know, where yeah. water's going to flow there. And, and I think everybody to, needs to weigh in. And we have to consider, you know, also the erosion issues right. and with the Kingsbury branch right there. That's what the, the Better Roads grants these days um, pretty much only deal with um, yeah. erosion issues, right. water issues. Um, so, um, so that would also be a cone. I mean, it, fixing the flooding of the annex is sort of a, a side part, yeah. um, even though, you know, that's it's the of, primary reason to prime, fix yeah. it, though, because we're getting yeah. flooded out. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's wet in there now. Um, so, and we would find out about that grant uh, sometime in February or March, Alan said, so we would know whether or not we got it. And we're kind going. of thinking that if we don't get the grant, we're just, let's do just it. do it. We're just going to do it. Yeah. Um, and, then, got and to me, it's a project. I think. Yeah. I think we should hire out, not have the road crew. We just hire it out, right. fit it out, have a contractor do it. Who knows what they're doing? Yeah, then we got I think our new trend we're, we're having the road after, yeah. and then be busy yeah. doing other things. Yeah, because hopefully uh, we can keep our road crew busy this summer doing. Because I read an interesting <laughs> article that Williamstown is struggling with the same thing we're struggling with. Like, yeah. It was almost where you know the roads. That what they were talking about was their general maintenance was lacking. Yeah. And in the defense of the road crew, they were doing all their different projects. And yeah. I, I just, I that's what we've seen. We keep right. doing right. projects. So, so like their slight board, board, their slight board was right. uh, well, having the exact same conversation that we're having. Yeah. They're getting hammered because yeah. they're saying my road's only this wide and the ditch is messed up and mm -hmm. where's the road crew? Yeah. And the, the conversation was exactly the same thing we had tonight. That's why I smirked a little bit because I said yeah. they're, they're getting beat up. And, this kind of started a little bit when Harry was here because he wanted to do more of the ditching. Well, Harry well, Harry was aware that this was coming. I mean, this was all coming down the pike um, when, when Harry was the road foreman. And he was aware, you know, he would go to the different road for, for yeah, areas where they would, they were kind of vetting the this whole municipal roads general permit plan. Yeah. And Harry did start doing, you know, and because he's you know, the state, state standards were there. Yeah. Um, so he was aware of what they were and started doing ditching work um, based By on their standards. Just, just like thinking ahead. So things when we're getting to budget, we're a little out of here, but it fits because they're looking at the same thing we are. Is it planning and hiring outs? Like if you got five culverts to change, hire a contract, come in, just change it. Let the road yeah. guys grade, do ditch maintenance, yeah. cover maintenance, but not replacement. Yeah, I've thought about that for years. So so that's something so we, stuff on but I, I should pull it. It was a Times Argus article, and I just smirked because I said, well, I have this exact same situation. Yeah. And it looks like a problem that was caused outside of us because yeah. we're reacting to the state. Yeah, mm -hmm. trying to take care of right. all their needs. <laughs> now, with the Valley Lake Road, are you going to take some of that? Material's got to come out of there. Off. Yeah, we're going to go. That got filled. A number of years because ago. the same thing has happened to Church Street. Yeah, they built it way up, right? So yeah, because you used to be able to drive right, right from the road right into the Gray House. Now you I drive down into right. so the Gray House. So that's kind of a common. We can look at it because to me it's gravel. You can recover it and just use it somewhere. Church Street was also, there were four sites that were listed in this uh, um, stormwater survey that was done um, for the town. And Church Street is, is one of them, uh, along with the Valley Lake Road. Yeah. Um, and uh, the general, um, you know, between the post office and the fire department, where that swale that kind of directs water right into mm -hmm. the Kingsbury Branch, that was another one that's mentioned. And the Church Street one, um, the project that they had planned for that, takes into account the water that's coming down from the Cabot Road and the water that's coming down the Church Street. The plan was to take care of both of those before it goes, goes into the Kingsbury branch. Because oh. right now the water that comes down the Cabot Road goes into those grates and must run through a culvert underneath yeah. Route 14 into, into the Kingsbury branch somewhere. Yeah. I haven't quite figured out where. I'm not sure where either. Yeah, but, um, so those, those were these different um, and plans that were, you know, that kind of call for these special catch basins that would catch the water and basically trap the the right. gravel, the erosion, and kind of a tank, -like and, and then disperse the yeah. water out mm -hmm. into the soil. Um, but again, our fear goes back to those things just filling up every right. time we get a flood, and you're cleaning right. it out. <laughs> yeah, and you know what would the maintenance cost right. be? Yeah. Maintenance. Yeah. yeah. So Church Street would, you know, so yeah, probably that road is higher. I mean, I know um, to solve the erosion problem there um, a couple of years ago. Um, the road crew put down three-inch stone because, uh, you know, the people uh, for, at the end of the street 
would, didn't want to cooperate at all to do anything to kind of check the water. So, mm -hmm. um, so we basically had to deal with from their property down. Right. Um, and the, you know, every time it rained, the road would wash out. So um, the road crew put down some three-inch stone, which didn't wash out. Right. But um, makes the road higher. Makes the road higher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I'll talk to Norman hopefully within okay. the next two weeks, but it may not be because I was pretty busy. Right. And, uh, if, if he can't, if it's not something they would do, then it might behoove us just to mm -hmm. find somebody. Just and, to he, and even for the for the better roads grant, if we had just an estimate of what we thought we would want to spend for some engineering, Civil engineering. And we can, I really we think can it, write that yep. into the. Yep, I'll try to resolve that. Do you have some way of getting an estimate, or somebody you know you can talk to? I'll find out. I'm going to call Norman yeah. first, and if he says if somebody says, yeah, we can come over and do it. I, I think they might not, but if they do, right. I will. If not, I'll ask him if he knows any civil engineers, or I can mm -hmm. look up somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a lady from from uh, Cabot. Lisa, is she an she's, engineer? She's a woman. A she's surveyor. a surveyor. She's okay. a woman. You want civil expert. person at this. Yes, some civil engineer. Even, even, if, even if they had somebody from Pike who could just come and eyeball it for... Yeah. Well, I, I'm more interested in... I'm concerned on that street, just with all the different characters we right. have. There's a lot of variables. You yeah. could... Just yeah, we just need people to agree. It's the same thing as we're dealing with up on the quarter. You need agreement because I don't want to. My fear is we go in there and dig, and now my basement's wrecked, or my culvert's wrecked, or mm -hmm. water's going somewhere else it shouldn't go, and mm -hmm. we're chasing this thing forever. So yeah. particularly once it's paved, mm -hmm. it's not easy to fix yeah. again. Mm -hmm. At least you can blame the engineer after that. Because <laughs> yeah. like my thumb, you know. Okay, so I'll start working on the grant and. Um, and then we'll, we'll see what, what we can get for some kind of Brandy, I have one other thing um, no, almost got before you me. go. Um, I was going to give this to you last Thursday, but you, you weren't here. Um, so we received an invo invoice from the Regional Planning Commission um, as part of the Better Roads grant program for the inventory work that they did. Um, and there's a 20% match from the town, which um, in the original plan, the, the invoice from the Regional Planning Commission for their work is for $4,683.70. There's a 20% match um, from the town um, that um, when we originally talked about this, it was going to be pretty much in kind. I was going to go out with them quite a bit when they were inventorying and, and help with the inventory. Um, that happened a little bit, but um, they were never really able to schedule anything that worked with my schedule and vice versa. So, But I need to go through hours that I was out there with them and email times, kind of come up with right. with my Our match, which, which should cover, it should pretty much cover um, at least 50% of our match, which I wrote that down here. Uh, is right now the match um, is nine hundred and thirty six dollars and seventy four cents. So I think um, with my time, um, I can charge them twenty dollars an hour um, for our for my time. Um, should be able to come up with half of that. But we we do have an invoice for them, um, and I'm, I'm just going to give this to you now. Mm -hmm. um, and then with this invoice, um, you know, with this payment. Once we have paid them, we have their we cancel check and we have the invoice from them, and I can figure out my hours with the total. Um, then we submit it to the Better Roads program, and they will reimburse us for uh, the eighty percent of, of the cost. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a we make the payment now, we get reimbursed, and hopefully they're a little bit more time. They have been good in the past um, when we did East Hill. They were they paid we reimbursed the town pretty promptly. So. Um, so, um, so that's that for that, but that's why I just wanted to give it to you before you left. Hurry. Good night. Um, no, don't dawdle. <laughs> so, the old Cory Road, I revised um, the minutes, um, and hopefully we've all had a chance. Is going to work from that now to write yes, this order? Yeah, I sent it, send it to him. Um, so we should have an order at the next meeting, is that the thought process? Um, we must be running. We, we have to, you know, 90, 90 or 60, 60 days, days runs out on December 9th. So, so we got to. Yeah. So uh, or we may need to have a meeting between now and then. Right. He he is working on okay. uh, the. Yes, because um, we don't want to miss. I don't want to miss line. the date. Yeah, no, we don't want to miss the deadline. Yeah, and he, he knows that. He's, um, he, I 
told him that we hadn't heard from the surveyor yet, and he had also contacted the surveyor. We don't need surveyor. that for our order, right? We don't need it for the no. order, no. So he knows when the deadline is. Um, what he would like from us is the fact that we have reviewed these revised hearing minutes um, and that we approve them. Um, okay. And then, um, and he's already working from these. I sent these to him okay. over a week ago. So, um, so um, I would make a motion that we approve the town highway uh, laying out hearing minutes from the um, laying out hearing that we had on October 9th over the uh, spur at the top of Old Quarry Road um, to lay that out as part of the town highway. Okay. All in favor? Aye. So we'll sign this and I will scan and send him a signed copy so he has that. And you can show us all the typos and mistakes. We right. Made. That's how it works. I said my reports have, you know, you spelled it. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I remember he pointed out last time. <laughs> did you have anybody read it? Yes, I did. Yeah. So basically, in revising it, I, I um, broadened the, the statements that I had made and yeah, I. You got to read that too. Yeah. Yeah, I should have dated it. And I should have reviewed the, um, and I reviewed the tape recording again to make sure that um, I didn't leave anything out that was critical or didn't say anything that wasn't said. Um, so, okay, so I will date that. I've seen that mistake made before. Yeah. I possibly made that mistake. Mm -hmm. I almost did if you hadn't put it out. <laughs> no, that's why I saw a date. I'm like, better put a date on it. Because okay. you're looking it up five years later going, why did we do this? Okay, so, um, Roku report, uh, you know, I think we've heard all about that. <laughs> yeah. There's some issues we'll work on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, town hall roof repair. I know that Peter was working on the sheetrocking. I'm not sure yeah. how far. He did the second coat today. Okay. Um, he has one more coat and then paint, and then okay. he's done. Okay. Um, the one one thing he did mention to me though was that there was a backsplash behind the sink, and that when he re had to fix the sheetrock, that whatever that was there was rotten. Mm -hmm. So he had to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to decide. He's thinking maybe we have some white tiles. He's thinking about just putting some white tile behind it so that. It doesn't damage the sheetrock when people use the Let's sink see. again. Mm -hmm. So it's something we already have laying around and it won't take them any extra time because it's a small mm -hmm. area. So. Yeah. Okay. Are you but okay with that? He believes that it should be done, absolutely no question, by this Friday. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Uh, the West Woodbury Cemetery, I spoke with Richard Patton um, and uh, he is going to uh, Gather the cemetery commission to discuss and decide. Oh, good. We're gonna that. get a meeting together. Yeah. 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 So um, and then they'll come back to us uh, to let us know what their decision is. Yeah. I think one thing that needs to be thought about in that that whole thing, the mm -hmm. cemetery, is what is the ground like where he's trying to donate the land? And yeah, we, we don't have any idea. Yet. That's what Richard's gonna figure out. I think. Yeah. Yeah. We I mean, have geological survey maps that show all of that. I don't know how detailed they are, like per square foot, but right. it might give us an idea of yeah, whether. Yeah, I would usable. imagine because it's adjacent. It would be land adjacent to it. That it would be pretty similar. But it was, yeah, it shouldn't be much different. Yeah. And obviously, before we right. pull the trigger on anything, we'll go up and walk right. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not very familiar with that cemetery either, so. No. I'm going to go up and do all the mapping for it. I've been working uh -huh. on this one, but that yeah. one needs to be done too, so. Yeah. Okay. Any, that's pretty much it on our... Do you want to talk about that letter from Coleman? No. No, okay. <laughs> no, we don't need, I don't think we really need no. to. No. Yeah. I forgot about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm just going to respond that, you know. response we had in July. Yeah, it was a written agreement that, you, you know. Sign it, we'll move. No work was going to be done until both parties signed it on it and the town signed off on it. And no one has signed off on it, so, um, you know. It's still out there. Get it done and we'll work yeah. on it in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, you know, he was the initial person that refused to sign it. So right, so puts it on him. Yeah. yeah. I don't really understand where he's no, coming from now. It's that confusing. Just trying to. Issues. Yep. Yeah, and that's why that's like we stick with our guns. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. we're right where we were. Mm -hmm. yep. we changed our bow. We're all right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay. Hallelujah. All in favor? <laughs> all right. Do we have a Do we have a employee assistance?